Indiana, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I am, Dad. Let's go get this art on the table and find out what we got. Come on, Pops, let's look at some art. Okay, Junior. Let's see, uh, first page, uh, 1970s Spectacular Spider-Man with Carrion and Peter Parker and White Tiger. Uh, what do you think? I think that's probably a maybe. I'd say it's a maybe. It's why he's not in costume, but uh, you got a lot of Peter Parker on there. Yeah, okay. Now, this is a definite yes. Defenders by Alan Carver from the 80s. The entire team full splash. That's a definite yes. This belongs in a museum. Yes, Junior, it does. Mike Zek, Captain America, published book novel Battle Page. I think that's a definite yes. Classic Zek Cap. Oh. Oh, Fantastic Four from 1992 by Paul Ryan with the whole team on it, including Franklin and every all of them. I think that's a yes. She's never looked so good. She's never looked so good, Junior. Herb Trimpey. Uh, we got the FF and the Mole Man uh, with the Hulk as well. I think that's a definite maybe. All right, I'll agree. Herb Trippy, Indiana Jones full splash page. That is a definite yes. That's a pretty decent likeness. Could have been a little better, but Herb Trippy, I like him. Okay, a little better, Junior. Indiana Jones semi splash page by the amazing Steve Ditko. I think that's a definite yes. All right. Yeah, look, he's he even got my gun belt and everything on there. Very he sure good. does, Very Junior. Junior. See, but you're not on here. I wonder why, Pop. Maybe because you weren't much of an adventurer in your time. Dad appears next issue. A double spread splash poster of Superman Red and Superman Blue by John Bogdanoff. I think that's a definite yes. All right. I concur. Okay, thank you, Junior. You know what? Stop calling me Junior, Pops. Yes, Junior. You weren't around long enough when I was growing up to be able to call me Junior. Yes, okay, son. Green Lantern Splash Page by Joe Staten from 1981. I think that's a yes. That's a beauty. Todd Smith X-Men Page from What If 
from 1993. I think that's a yes. What if it's uh, pretty hot these days? What if it's on television, Junior. I mean, son. Nice Ron Friends Superman splash page from 1997. I think that's a yes. Ah, Junior. John Sable as James Bond by Mike Corell. James Bond. I think we'll keep that in the show. James Bond. It's a beauty there, Pops. Mike James Bond. Bond never looked so good. Yes. Except when he had a goatee. George Tuska Superman Daily, but no, it's Clark Kent and Lois Lane in every panel. We'll probably hold off on that one. Coletta Ink, so. Yeah, like I said, we'll hold off on that one. Very nice Joe Bennett Wolverine page. A lot of action. I think that's a yes, Junior. That bottom image frightens me. It's scary, Junior. I mean, son. At least it's not snakes. Mm -hmm. Nice Paul Ryan Avengers West Coast page from 1991. Wonder Man all over it and some other characters. I think that's a yes. I think we have some fans that are Wonder Man collectors, so all right. Okay. Holy Toledo here, Junior. X-Men The End by Sean Chen with the entire X-Men group. There's over a dozen characters on the bottom of that one. I would think that's a yes, Junior. All right, all right. Now it's a beauty. Sean Chen, uh, you know, he's drawn some uh, characters that I don't really care for, that Bill Lash and whatnot, but uh, this one's all right. It's not a Bill Lash, but it's close. Teen Titans Double Spread by the great Tony Daniel has everybody on it. Wow. That's a keeper. Fortune and glory, Dad. Fortune, Fortune and, glory. and glory, son. This needs to be in a museum, Junior. I agree. Is it Uther Man Scheiber? Can we no, we can't. No, because it won't sell. What? We got it. Everything has to sell. Sell, 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 sell. All right, Junior. Let's get this show on the road. That sounds like a good idea to me, Dad. Let's get going. Dang it. That sidecar sucks. The sidecar was just fine, Junior. Yeah, yeah. When you were 10 years old, Pops. How is everybody doing today? I wish we'd stop kicking that camera, Dad. Sorry, Junior. Yeah, you'll be sorry after the show's over. So, uh, hey, I hope everybody enjoyed that. It was a little longer than normal, we know, but uh, we, we wanted to have a little bit of fun, and we didn't want to go through the whole bin dive in front of you as we did the last time we did a show like this. So this is uh, all new, Holy Costume Budgets. Thank you, Brett. And uh, Ron, congratulations. You did pick out the Star Wars font on the Berkey Warehouse. That was intentional. I didn't think anybody would catch that, but I should have known a graphic person like yourself would see that we did that. So uh, anyway, thank you for tuning in on a Saturday afternoon. It's rather late, and I, I hope everybody who went to New York today had a good show. This is uh, our special Bindiana Jones episode. I don't recall who named it Bindiana Jones for us, but it was somebody in the chat. And so we appropriated that for the show and uh, made it into our Raiders of the Lost Art episode. And we're thrilled to be here with you today on this beautiful day in Kent, Ohio, actually, not Ravenna, Ohio. But uh, so it's a regular claim sale, just like we typically do when we uh, with the Dueling Dealer show or a regular show where I just have one seller. And uh, there will be 55 artworks in total. And so, yeah. 55 and the process to claim will be just to type claim and the number of the lot and every artwork that we pull up on the screen to show you will be numbered one through 55 so very simple like that yes copyright 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 i should make a meme for that samuel uh yeah next time and you do get a no no prize there ron thank you again and thank you for the logo everybody ron did give us the the logo for the show there at the end of the trailer that was all Ron. So I appreciate that, Ron. And uh, 
you, you get another no prize just for that as well. So, uh, all right, uh, no cakes today, absolutely not. This is all selling, all fun, I hope. So, so like we said, we, we've actually, so we did that bin dive, and, and, I, and Pops hasn't been able to say a word since I've been taking care of the intro here for everybody, but we did the bin dive about a month and a half ago. It didn't work very well. So we had that artwork to go through, and then we did two bin dives okay. together before that, and then uh, Pops did his own bin dive after uh, the last time I was here. So we've got a mix of art from four different bin dives that are all priced, and that's where this art has come from. And it is, uh, it is lowest to highest, so that is correct, lowest to highest. Well, Pops, you did give me those five pieces of art right at the end. Oh, so 51 to 55 are mixed mix match, but the first one through 50 are low to high. There you go. There you have it. And uh, all right, well, why don't we get this show on the road, like Pops said earlier, you know? So uh, first artwork here, let me get us going. All the way over up number one, lot number one, folks. Just to start low to high, folks. First piece, very cool. John Sable page, John Sable freelance blood trail number three, page 13, just 250 bucks. John Sable in every panel, Mike Grell pencils and inks, and he signed it at the top too in ink. So, sort of a cool piece to start us off. Almost looks like a, a Sean Connery James Bond type page. But uh, John Sable, Pencil and Inks, Mike Grill, the first piece, that's $250. Yeah, that doesn't look like you at all, Pops. Yeah. So that's the first one. All right, let's get your second artwork on the screen. Second one, very cool, by the Golden Age, Martin Nodell from 1992, eight and a half by 11, very cool pencils and inks and hand colored by Martin Nodell, Alan Scott. From his creator, Martin Nodell, ink and color marker. Very cool piece for $275. I am a big Jimmy Stewart fan, too. Yeah, so. I didn't want to cool. say anything. <laughs> Almost 30 years old. All right, if anybody out there is named Dave, this is a perfect artwork for you. That is correct, son. All right, so why don't we move on to your third artwork there, Pops. Third piece, very cool. If you're into published card art, and we have the published card image with it, very cool. Hector Gomez uh, painted this from the 1993 Skybox Ultraverse. It was the prime promo card uh, number one, eight, eight inches by 11 and a quarter, all painted by Hector Gomez. That's the first piece uh, of prime. Very cool. And there's the published card right next to it. And that's the, that's the number one. That's the number one promo card from the set. It's like a foil card. So very cool with, uh, on a little thicker board. Uh, and it's all painted by Hector Gomez. Uh, that is round number three on there. And if people have comments, they can uh, make any comments on the side. So that's number three. We call them lots, Pop, not rounds. I know you oh, like to sorry. say round. You're okay. used to that dueling dealer's Lot, word, but lots. Uh, lots. They're lots. These are lots yes, today. Sir. Okay. Very cool. Published. Even has the style guide markings on the back of published Batman style guide by Phil Hester. 11 by 17. It was called Legends Batman. It was a style guide pinup signed at the bottom. And again, this was published and used from 1996. Has all the has all the markings on the back. Very very cool. Uh, published pinup on 11 by 17 inch art board by Phil Hester. Phil Hester. He was on Comic Art Live. Yeah, as, as a panelist. Very cool. Very cool. So that's that one. This is next one is sort of an odd odd piece, but I thought it was pretty cool where they did. Uh, this was a, a Stan Drake. It was called Pop Idols and Disco Scene Sunday Strip from June 24th, 1979. I thought it was cool that it has Rod Stewart on it and John Travolta and Donna Summer and the Tramps. And it was a published Sunday from 1979. And it's a bigger board, 20 by 15 inches done on thicker artboard. Sort of cool with everybody on it. and. Uh, uh, and a group called the Trans, but Travolta, Rod Stewart, and Donna Summer on it. So very, very cool during the disco era. And that's, again, 20 by 15 inches. Very cool, large 20 by 15 pin. 
So that's that one. Very nice. Like I said, if people have questions, just ask away on the side. So. All right. Well, Wes did make you an offer on your lot number three. That was the card art, the Skybox card art. And the offer was $300 at your $400 price. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Before we get to the recap, if we can do $350, uh, just say yay, and it's yours for the $350. Uh, Wes, thanks so much uh, on that. So uh, $350 on that one before we go to recap or anything like that. Let's go over to uh, lot six. So lot six, very cool. Lot six is Tom Dreinberg, ink by Jay Least, and this is pencil and ink. Ion number five, which is actually uh, all the Green Lanterns. Ion is actually Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. So you got Kyle Rayner Green Lantern and Hal Jordan Green Lantern in every panel. Very, very cool page by this great art team, uh, Tom Grindberg and Jay Leaston, and it's really, really detailed. Very, very cool piece there. I agree, Pops. Yes, thank you, so. You sure can pick some good art. Oh, happy days. Oh, happy days. So that is lot number six. That is six, sir. All right, so let's get on to lot number seven. Lot and just seven. so everybody knows, this gentleman does take time payments. So he, that we got that out of there, and we take time. If you do claim an artwork tonight, we'll, we will show you the email address at the end of uh, the show, so you can email. But the, his email is Mike Berkey at AOL.com. And in the future, I just started taking Zelle also. I could take Zelle for payments as well, and even Venmo for certain payments too, uh, as well as checks. So, so that's good. Next one, very cool. Ninth Bronze Age. 1981, 40 years old, Wonder Woman, 280, page 8, with Diana Prince, Wonder Woman on it, and then Steve Trevor and Diana dressed at the bottom. Very cool piece, 41 years old, three panels of Wonder Woman, and a couple of panels of Wonder Woman as Diana Prince with Steve Trevor at the bottom as they're both walking into work at the Pentagon. So very cool 40-year-old Jose Delbo page. If people know Jose Delbo Wonder Woman pages are, are getting very, very sought after. Yep, and that one has been claimed by Yay. Mr. Barucci. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nicholas. And just so everybody knows, I wish I had time to make some special memes for the show, but I was only able to put the whole intro together. And that took long enough, I can assure you. Eight minutes of video probably took me about 10 hours of editing. Sadly, and shooting. That doesn't even count the shooting. So uh, so don't expect any memes today. We want to keep the show moving right along. But thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate you breaking the ice like that for thank us. Thank you, Nicholas. The next lot, Bob Budiansky, Submariner. Submariner in every panel from 1984. Saga, the Submariner number three. Very nice page with Submariner and his girlfriend, Jacqueline Trufat, but beautiful. Bob Budiansky, page from the from the story, The Twain Shall Meet, with, uh, again, Submariner in every panel. And that one's been claimed. Yeah, that's a Bruce nice too. one. Very Bob Budiansky did so few art, so little art for Marvel, so it's very hard to find his art on the art market, so. I knew that one would go. Very nice page. And thank you again, Nicholas. Why don't you call him, you know, junior or something Nicholas, like that? Nicholas, you're junior. He's not my son. All right. On to lot nine. Lot nine. The great Don Heck from 1993. Don Heck, pencil and inks. Oh, if we only had Bill of Thor here today. We have, we have Thor throughout on the story the Theft of Thor's Hammer. We have Thor in four great panels. The Warriors three, Fandral, Hogan, and Volstagg, and Loki in two panels, and the goddess Freya throughout the entire page. Pencil and inks by Don Heck, 28 years old. Great page with all the gods, all the Norse gods throughout the entire page as Thor's hammer gets stolen from him. So that is lot number nine for 500. And my hair is longer than Thor's. Godly. Can't believe it. All right. On the lot. Yeah. Thanks, Pops. All right. On the lot 10. Old timer. 
Lot 10, just a beautiful large pinup of Captain America by the great Joe Simon for only $600. It's drawn on thick board, and it is very, it is a bigger piece. Uh, it's drawn on 13 by 18 inch art board. It's only $600. And also, it, it's hard to see, but there's actually a large penciled shield drawn behind Captain America's left arm and shield on the piece. You can sort of see it in the scan. Oddly enough, there's no signature on this, but this was bought from the Joe Simon family. This is 100% Joe Simon. It's undated and unsigned, but it is 100% Joe Simon drawn art. So, uh, and it's just $600, pencil and ink by Joe Simon. 100% uh, guarantee. And like I said, it's from, this was bought from the Joe Simon estate. So uh, for that price, I just thought uh, that's a pretty good piece for $600 from the great Joe Simon. And it's a pretty large piece if you compare it against other, other art. It's a, it's a very large piece and a nice big, big, uh, wait, let's get that. Belongs in a museum, just like that Mel just said. Belongs in a museum. Yeah, you, you've got uh, our focus. Hold on. You, okay, there, there, there you go. go. Man. Yeah, but that's a nice, that's a nicer large image. My glasses when Captain America throws his mighty shield, something, something, foes they must yield. All right, pops. Next. Okay, six hundred dollars only, folks. That's a good one. There. <laughs> All right, on to lot eleven. Lot eleven, golden age from my era, folks. A nineteen forty-seven. Tarzan's daily with Tarzan in every panel battling a crocodile. Rex Maxson from 1947. Nice page. This is 74 years old. Almost as old as me. I Junior. was just going to say that, Pops. And this is a large, this is 20.25 inches across. So a nice large daily with Tarzan battling a crocodile. And so, What's that on the back? And on the back, the story is called, oh boy, Surian Strategy. That was the title of that storyline. So that's on the back of it. Alligators. Why did it have to be alligators? Uh, well, crocodiles. Crocodiles. All right, fine. Alligators are in freshwater, Junior. Crocodiles are in saltwater. I was never good at biology. Thank you there. All right, on to Lot 12, lot ladies and gentlemen. 12, folks. Okay, the great Herb Treppy. We have the Hulk and the Thing with all the Fantastic Four battling the Mole Man. There's a semi-splash of the Mole Man. Very cool. Fantastic Four Unlimited number four from 1993. This is 28 years old. We have the Hulk, Thing, Atalanta, the girl... All battling the Mole Man, who has the Human Torch and Invisible Woman held cat captive. Very cool 28-year-old Herb Trey. But at the top, you got a real nice Thing and Hulk helping out. The Hulk crossed over and helped out the Fantastic Four in this issue. So very cool 1990s, all that key 1990s art. You got the Hulk and the FF there. Everybody but Mr. Fantastic is in that one. But a great shot of the first ever FF villain, the Mole Man. Very, very cool piece there, folks. Wow. You had to stand on that to still appear tall. Wow. I'm getting so excited, I'm going to take off my jacket there. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? We're moving on to Lot 13. Lot 13. We're going to do another, another Herb Tribute, but this is from FF Annual 26. Very cool Herb Tribute page from the same year from the story Dreadface Lives. A uh, great page with the thing and Miss Marvel in every panel. This is sort of a key page. If you remember the storylines in the 90s where the thing wore that big helmet on his head because it was infected, Miss Marvel asked him to take off the helmet on his head so she could look at his face. And she sort of looks at his face and she says, yikes, you look ugly. Put that <laughs> helmet back on your face. And she freaks out. So this is very, very cool page from that storyline where the where the thing covers his head with a helmet because it's all infected and ugly looking holy toledo <laughs> all 
Oh man! So that that is lot number thirteen, folks. Yep. There's uh, the chat is hot tonight. I do like that. Uh, we're gonna have Mike and Anthony in a sing off. I don't believe that's gonna happen. Oh yeah. But I do like Ben Deanna Jones in the last claim. That's a, that's a very good. And somebody had a well of souls as a, as something the other night too. I thought that was a very creative concept for a title for something. All right, on to lot fourteen. Let's lot get to fourteen. That one here. Green Lantern. We have a beautiful Green Lantern page here for, by uh, Tom Grinberg from 1998 from the Green Lantern 80-page giant number one. You have all four Green Lanterns here, Hal Jordan, John Stewart, Guy Gardner, and Alan Scott. So this is a very cool page with all of them on there. That's a beautiful page by Grinberg. Yes. And uh, uh, the Green Lantern on that one. All right. Very, and, very cool. And there is a claim from Enrique Gaspar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enrique. There we go. All right. So we've got that, that one. All. Yeah, no. Okay. Fantastic piece. That's one of my favorites of the lot so yes. far, Pops. That was a doozy. That was a mini doozy there, Junior. Oh, right. Now, this one was uh, picked up in the uh, first bin dive that we did, and we didn't have a price for it. It's very cool. Mike Plume, just beautiful, beautiful detailed pencils done on 11 by 17 uh, paper. This is called Rip Van Winkle. So it was probably, there's probably a painting somewhere from a card set, but this is Rip Van Winkle. Uh, not sure uh, the year, but it's probably from the 80s or 90s, but it's 11 by 17. The actual art image is 10.25 by 12.5 inches. Rip Van Winkle sitting in a forest snoozing with lots of detailed leaves and foliage all around him. But it's very, very detailed and signed at the bottom by the great Mike Plug. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's hard to see. I know the other pieces, but the detail on this is really, really, really nice. Next. Very nice, sir. Thanks, Larry. I agree. That's beautiful pencil work on there by Blue. Now, this next one's a little more modern. Next the artist piece. Goes. Very nice. A beautiful 11 by 17 Phil Noto Wonder Woman pinup. Very, very nice. 11 by 7 drawn in 2004 signed. Beautiful image of the Amazon princess by the great Phil Noto. Done on 11 by 17 paper. And very nice shield behind her, almost like her tiara or whatnot, but a neat little shield behind her. But pencils, inks, very, very nice. And uh, we have a claim. Yes, we do. Thank you very much, Christopher Edwards. Thank you, Christopher. This next piece, folks, this next piece, Bindiana didn't really want me to sell it, but we got to because this is the show. Bindiana Jones. Herb Trippy and the Further Adventures with Indiana Jones leaping almost to his death with Marion Ravenwood from the story The Grecian Urn as Indiana leaps with the evil Andre Fonte watching from the cliff. But just a great full splash of Indiana Jones. I'm sorry, Bindiana Thank Jones. You You're welcome, Junior. Leaping, beautiful full splash by the great Herb Trempy, and this is 37 years old. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much, Michael Avila. Michael Avila, thank you, Michael. How are you not breaking character tonight, Pop? I don't know what you're talking about, Junior. All right. On to lot 18. This is a golden age, technically. 1955 Russ Heath, pencils and inks when Marvel... This is actually an Atlas Marvel book. They did a book called Snafu Number no. 1. And this is a page, Russ Heath, pencils, inks, and wash tones, twice up for just $900. This is from 1955. It's 14.2 by 19.75 inches. It's from a story called The Blackboard Jungle, which was a, a, a spoof story on T television and everything with the guy, and, the guy battling and the girl knocking him out. But this is all Russ Heath pencils, inks, and signed at the top, as you can see, from 1955. And it's twice up art 
and just beautiful, beautiful art. And believe it, again, this is actually an Atlas book, which is actually the precursor to Marvel. So very, very cool. I just thought for the price, beautiful, beautiful. They got a great Russ Heath piece. And interesting that the two middle panels were actually in placed in from the back. They reversed them. But it's all art. And, that's done on craft and it's done on craft tip. Yeah. Beautiful wash tones, folks. Just $900 tones. by the great Russ Heath. There you go. All right. That's a beauty. On to lot 19. Lot 19. This is almost like an African uh, Bindiana Jones. Very cool. Stephen Sadowski, the published cover to The Last Phantom, number seven from 2011, 10 years old. Beautiful cover. You see there, they, they did two different versions. The great company Dynamite. They are a great, great, great company and a great publisher. Uh, and claim, and uh, they put out th this volume. I don't know who the owner of that is, but they, they do pretty good work over there at Dynamite. Yeah, 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 exactly. And thank you very much. We thank you, it. Ann. That's a beautiful piece of art. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. A little, little late on that one, sir. Uh, all right, let's move over to your, uh, let's see, Lot 20. Lot 20, folks. <laughs> Another DC cover. Arsenal. Arsenal, uh, number two cover. That's a DC cover from the story. Six degrees, all in the family. And we have Arsenal with two nice images of the Green Arrow. That's a published cover from 1990. I'm sorry. Yeah, 1998. This is 23 years old. And we have the published image there next to it with really cool with Arsenal and Green Arrow on it. And then again, published DC cover, they're hard to find. And it's signed at the bottom. Uh, Rick Mays is the artist and he penciled and inked it. And it's signed on the back and very, very cool. The publish with the DC stamp from 1998. Published cover, if you're a Green Arrow fan, Rick Mays, uh, that's the cover for you. Thank you very much for showing that one, Pops. You need a drink of water? No, I'm pretty good for right now. A couple more lots. A couple right. more lots. 20 Junior. lots is a lot for you to do couple, in a row. A couple more lots, Junior, and then and Dad will take a little, little, little break. All right. No naps, though, Pops. All right. We'll move no on to lot 21. Very cool. Again, we're doing some of the great guys. Reed Crandall, Pencils and Inks from 1973 Larger from Creepy Number 54, Page 3. From the story, This Graveyard is Not Deserted. Pencilings. I love that last panel where the guy goes to the mountain and the mountain is shaped like a skull head. Very cool. This this evil cowboy kills this shaman. And obviously, you know, he's going to get his just desserts at the end. But again, twice up art, 12 and a half by 18 art image on a 14.4 by 19.75 artboard. And the lettering was directly on the art page. The reason there's glue on it was uh, they they wrote this story in other languages, and so but the uh, the other language uh, uh, word balloons uh, came off, so you get all the English wording. But just a really cool twice up Reed Crandall penciling page for under a thousand. Very very cool, very cool piece. Can't argue about well, that that's piece. That's an excellent. I like it. So you, we don't have the word balloons that came off. No. No, but you get all the English, which so that way we could all read it all in our country here, which is sort of important. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. All right, on to lot 22. This next piece is a very unique piece. You get three items with it. This is actually the, the Silver Age preliminary cover by the great Howard Purcell to Sea Devils number 31. This is eight, this is eight and a half by eleven, very detailed pencils for the published cover. And this is the original one-of-a-kind transparency. The printer's proof for the art, the published art that came with it. And then you still get a color copy of the actual cover. But this is 100% full pencils. This is the preliminary cover to the 1966 Sea Devils number 31 by the great Howard Purcell, who was the main Sea Devils artist. And again, you got the actual Kodak. It's, it, it's the actual Kodak. Even says Kodak all on the back of it. The actual transparency that comes with it what a great thing to, to frame together the the uh howard howard purcell uh did his layout skills on this and just a beautiful uh piece with the great monster and everything and all the logo elements were added afterwards but you get them all all three pieces 
and uh, a great piece uh, of history without having to pay an arm and a leg for a, a twice up Silver Age DC cover. They don't make undersea creatures like that anymore, Pops. They don't. This almost reminds me of the creature from 93 million miles to Earth. And just so you know, in that little globe right here by my finger is all the sea devils. They're shooting a ray at the giant monster. So the whole sea devils team is on there. So very, very, very cool. Very, 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 very cool. Very cool, unique piece. I've never owned anything like that. So oh. Oh, another cover here. And it could be yours. Getting back to the golden age again. Al Avison, pencil and inks from 1949. Carrie Drake, number 16, with Carrie Drake busting open a door as he's watching the evil. Her name is the evil Mother Whistler as she holds holds the other female hostage with her gun. And the Carrie Drake, the, the words Carrie Drake at the top are actually hand-drawn. The rest is stat, but a published 1940s cover by the great Al Avison. Uh, Heritage has sold two of these covers in the past, and they all went for, both of them went for $1,380, and that was a couple of years back. So very cool cover. It's drawn edge to edge on 11.6 by 16.4 inch art board, and it's all art. So... Very, very cool, published, Golden Age cover, the ace detective, Carrie Drake. Very nice piece. Yeah, and as Nick said, everybody, if you like the show, click on the like, thumbs up. We appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed or turned on notifications, you know, that's, uh, that's the best way to make sure you never miss a show on the Comic Art Live channel is that notifications. Ring the bell. Right. You do that. And what do you need a break, Pops? Yeah, yeah, okay. 10 seconds. Uh-oh. I'm hey. going to take a sip. Oh, boy. Hey, I, we can see you on screen oh, there, shit. buddy. He's taking his clothes off, ladies and gentlemen. This is not that kind of show, Dad. Oh. Holy mackerel, Ali. I get you back never know tomorrow. what's going to happen in a, in a Bindiana Jones wow. episode. And this is just the first. Just, just wait till we have another one. I'm frightened. So, uh, nice pickups by everybody. It's, and again, peekaboo, the, son. Peekaboo. Oh, for God's sakes. You see what I have to put up with? This, this man. Deserves to be in a museum permanently. <laughs> okay. I want to. Oh, you're a Marvel Comics fan. Dad wanted to change his shirt just for a little bit. That other one was getting a little stuffy. Oh, boy. All <laughs> right. Well, let's get on to Lot 24. Lot 24, folks. A nice Silver Age horror cover by the great Frank Springer from 1967. Beautiful Ghost Stories, Ghost Stories number 18 from 1967, the published cover from the story, The Fastest Gun in Boot Hill. It's 55 years old. Who is the fastest gun during their life? Check out this great Frank, Spinner's, Frank Springer Spooky Showdown with the awesome cloak skeleton in the background. This is just beautiful. Let's see. Yeah, all the stats are stats. But the graveyard at the bottom and everything, everything is drawn. And the art image, uh, uh, let's see, the art image is 11 and a half by 16.1 inches on Bristol board. And it actually is from 1966. It has a stamp on the back, November 15th, 1966 on the back. For you Halloween fans coming up. So that's very cool. They got a nice Silver Age, little oversized Frank Springer cover for a pretty good price from 1966. This is 55 years old, folks. Wow. Wow. And you meant uh, all the copy is stats, right? Yeah, all the copy is stat. All right. You said all the stats are stats. I mean, stats are stats. But yeah. yeah all right. But I mean, I just wanted to make sure they weren't drawn. I wasn't sure if they were drawn or not, but they're all stat. Yeah, they're all stat. All right. Very but good. all the art you see is art of, of the drawings, so... <laughs> Very cool. Is Mike going to watch? Is Mike going to chase uh, seagulls <laughs> to an airplane soon? Uh, maybe, maybe, ladies and gentlemen. The show is uh, still early. All right, on to Lot 25. Lot 25, another cover, folks. The sexy Razor. Razor Uncut, number 23. Published cover, Pencils and Ink by Steve Scott from 1996. This is 25 years Old with a beautiful image of the sexy razor leaping with her little swords on her wrist, leaping right at the reader. Oh, 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 oh. Razor sexy razor action cover. $1,200, folks. 
They didn't draw them like that when I was buying comics. No, Dad. no, they didn't have a detail like that. I'll we'll just say. You had to buy Jose Double 1970s Wonder Woman or if you wanted anything sexy back then. There you go. I actually had the Hots. You know, I was old enough to New Junior. New I actually had the Hots for Lois Lane a little bit in the 70s, too. Really? And Gwen and Mary Jane, of course. Of but course. they never really wore sexy outfits. Well, hey, man, you, you got a, you got a, a, a claim offer oh. here from Jordan. And I want to show this. Yeah, it was on Lot 24. That was for the Frank Springer. Oh, Ghost the Frank Story Springer. Story. Yeah. He's uh, offering you $1,000. Uh, for Jordan, we'll do, we'll do the thousand dollars. That's fine. Thousand dollars for Jordan on the Ghost Stories cover, sure. All right, thank you very for much. For a big Jordan. fan of the show and a star on the show, as well. and a star. And this might get his name and get his picture on cards one day. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Jordan, I can let you know that the cards arrived today, and yours looks fantastic. So uh, I can't wait to show that off for everybody. When we uh, we got to get them signed and then shipped over to Anthony Snyder, so we can get these get them all kind of set up, and then we're gonna put put together probably twenty sets that uh, we're going to give out to uh, some people, and then of course we'll be having them tipped into bags for, of uh, art shipments from Dueling Dealers. So uh, you can expect to get those probably pretty soon. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to lot 26. Lot 26, Bronze Age Marvel. We finally got a Spider Man. Very cool page. Jim Mooney and Frank Springer from 1979. Carry on smashes. Peter Parker leaps to try to grab Carry on. He smashes out the window. And at the bottom, very cool early image of the White Tiger. So, very cool page. Uh, this is 50. No, hard to believe that's 42 years old. Wow. A beautiful page from Spectacular Spider-Man 29. I've owned, I've owned three pages from this story, and I've sold them all. And uh, hard to find white tiger art also. And the early Jim Mooney 70s Spider-Man art is very hard to come by. I had a couple of good Spider-Man pages. They all sold for over $3,000 each. Now, this is Peter with carry-on, but you got great images of the white tiger there and Peter falling out the window. But a very cool page. 1970s Spider-Man art by the great Jim Mooney and Frank Springer again. So that's a nice page. That was the first one that we looked at. That was in yes. our bin dive. Yes, yes. Sir, yes indeed. Sir. Indeed, Junior. Indeed. All right. Let's uh, get the next one up here. This is a pretty interesting piece. This is a very interesting piece. If you ever wanted an inexpensive George Harriman crazy cat-like image, this was actually a character called Mehetabel the Cat from 1927. This was a published piece and uh yep. and i think is this the one that's acclaimed no that's got lingo picked up the uh the last one. Oh, oh okay but uh very cool and it's signed harriman in there and uh i heard to believe and it's actually a cat that looks just like crazy cat but it's a one page one one image gag uh with the cat falling overboard very cool um pace it's eight and a half by 12.5 the actual image is 5.6 inches and it is signed but the story was titled Mehetabel's Extensive Past and Fell Overboard. But 1927, uh, 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 George Harriman uh, drawing basically a crazy cat type of, type of character. So uh, I just thought hard to find crazy cat to get an inexpensive Harriman for your collection. This one would be it, folks, with the cat on it as his head is stuck in a, in a, coffee, in a coffee container. So very, very interesting a uh, piece of art. So, hey Scott, I did. I mentioned it. I pulled your thing up there. Oh. Your, your comment as well. But yes, you did get that uh, prior piece. Thank you. No problem. A peep pop. <laughs> I was switching between tabs, so I didn't see it initially when it went through. But uh, but yeah, I know that's a great airman, though. I mean, like you yeah. said, uh, you should. If anybody hasn't seen it yet, we have a, have a very great chat on the channel about George Harriman from, from four collectors that uh, have well collected George's work and written books about him. So it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good view. I think we did it, gosh, that was probably like seven months ago. So seek it out. It was, a, it was a great spot that we had on Comic Art Live. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the cat is called Mehetta Bell the cat. And it was a, it was a gag throughout the, throughout the, uh, Harriman's past uh, during crazy cat and the cat with a checkered past and questionable morals. So, Funny leaping overboard with his head in a coffee pot. So next piece, sir. 
Next piece, the great Ross Heath again. Lot 28. Lot 28, all oversized, all American. And look at the battle scene at the bottom with a guy going after a woman at the bottom. But great image, all American cover recreation, all American men of war by the great Ross Heath with some World War I flyers crashing into a house. And we got some battling at the bottom and signed at the bottom. This is on drawn on 14 point by 14 by 18 inch artboard with an 11 and a half by 16.75 art image penciled and inked and hand colored by the great Ross Heath. I thought, you know, he's not with us anymore. I mean, just, a, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, without spending crazy money for a published cover, I just thought his recreations are really nice. And you even got two, two uh, dirigibles, blimps in the background, zeppelins in the background with the cords coming down on the top in the background there, which I thought was pretty cool too. So you got just a lot going on. Beautiful houses, crash plane, flying planes, dirigibles, everything. That's how, you, that's how you landed that plane. I didn't want wow. to show anybody that. That was that was my. I said the one that's flying is my plane. No, no, no. I was You're riding. Good. I was driving that plane. Your plane was the green one, sir. Oh, okay. What an embarrassment. All right, on to lot twenty nine. Lot twenty nine, Pe Wally Wood pencils and inks. Very cool from a, the Monster Valentine's card illustration. Beautiful monster where it says you've got me wrapped around your finger with this crazy crazy woman with a guy literally his body is like a rubber band wrapped around her finger oh my goodness that has just got to hurt this gruesome card was from the valentines from 1960s uh and this is actually wally wood with with ralph reese on it but very cool uh 5.75 by 8.75 inch published Valent, creepy Valentine card art. So it was called the Monster Valentine cards, actually. So from the 1960s, from Tops by the great Wally Wood. Beautiful piece. Now, this next piece. What are you smiling for, Junior? <laughs> what are you smiling for, Junior? Um, Ooh, la I'm la. Sorry, sorry, sir. Some people are going to really like this one. Black Check out 30. this beautiful Betty Page full painting. By the great heavy metal and Castle of Frankenstein artist Marcus Bose. It's undated, but it's from the, believe it be, from the 1980s. It's done in acrylics. Beautiful Betty Page painting. It's 14 by 18 inches. Full painting with her in sexy lingerie with a mannequin behind her and some alcohol bottles. Just a beautiful painting. Oil on canvas board. Playboy pinup model and 50s sex symbol, of course, Betty Page. And again, people, if you're not familiar with Marcus Bose, he was a great heavy metal cover painter artist and Castle of Frankenstein artist, but beautiful, lifelike 14 by 18 inch painting drawn edge to edge. Beautiful piece. Sir, we're going to the next artwork. Wow. Well, this is a huge, huge And there's piece. another huge one, another Golden Age cover recreation by the great Shelly Moldoff. This is the first appearance cover of the Black Terror from Exciting Comics, uh, issue number nine, the first Black Terror comic cover. The Black Terror's first appearance was in this issue. It's on 15 by 21 and a half inches with a... Uh, actual image on a 16.25 by 23.75 Bainbridge board on the back signed by Shelly Moldoff, but just a really cool, Shelly's not with us anymore, but a really cool historic cover with the first appearance of the Black Tear. Beautiful, huge. Everything is art on this. The entire piece. Logo, coloring, pencils, inks, hand coloring by the great Shelly Moldoff in the 1990s. Very cool piece. And a lot of fans in the chat, that's for sure. Yes. I, I'm not sure if, if uh, Marcus Bose did the uh, monster. Uh, Castle of Frankenstein and Heavy Metal. He was the cover painter. He, artist. Oh, he did both? Did he? Yeah. He was. Okay. He was. He, he drew cast. He was a cover artist for Heavy Metal and Castle of Frankenstein. All right. I stand corrected. All yeah. right. Cover painter. He did both. All right. All right, sir. On to lot 32. For you Green Lantern fans... A Bronze Age Green Lantern splash page. Green Lantern 145 splash with Green Lantern and Carol Ferris 
flying through the air to their mansion, evidently, from the story titled Golden Dawn, Golden Death. This is 40 years old splash page, folks. Green Lantern uses his power ring so Carol Ferris can fly with him to their huge mansion. But again, 40-year-old Green Lantern splash by the great Joe Staten, pencils and inks. 1500 for that one, folks. Very cool. Very nice piece. But... What? Nothing. Nothing. I'm oh. sorry. I'm just in a good mood today, Pops. That's good, son. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. stay hydrated here, folks. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, for you DC cover fans, we got two DC covers here. Beautiful Justice League Task Force cover by Sal Baluto from 1995. This is a great cover with the entire Just League. This is from the story called Clack from 1995. It's 26 years old. And we have the whole Justice League Task Force team of Martian Manhunter, Gypsy, Elrond, and Triumph as they're all chasing after Impulse. And it has an acetate overlay with just the logo, so you can lift it up and you get all art from top to bottom. That's all art. Everything is art from top to bottom. Very cool. Published cover. Justice League Task Force, 26 years old. It's Sal Valuto, inked by Chip Wallace. Published cover. You can see the color cover next week. But 1990s DC covers are getting hard to find, so that's a DC cover. And the next one is a DC cover, right. folks. So hang on. You did get an oh. offer. Just wanted you know, on, on lot 31. So that was the uh, mold up. From Gabe Carino, thirteen hundred dollars, and you were fifteen hundred dollars on that one. Hey, hey Gabe, can you go thirteen fifty? I was going to say fourteen, but if we could just agree to thirteen fifty, that way we don't have to go to the recap, and it's all yours. And that was Alan. There we are. All right. Well, we'll wait to see what uh, Gabe may beautiful, a to huge, do. huge piece. No. All right, Gabe is taking it. Look Thank you very much, Gabe. Compared to our regular cover, it's a big piece. Thanks, Gabe. I mean, thanks, Gabe. It's about time you got back in character. I'll back in character, Junior. <laughs> All right, sir. Let's get the, uh, let's see, next one up on here. The next cover, folks. Next Matt, cover. Another cover. Man. Matt Haley, Pencils and Inks. And this is an extra bonus cover. This is beautiful. The detail on this, Firestorm and Donna Troy who is considered Wonder Woman's sister, I guess, but a, just a great Firestorm and Donna Troy flying through outer space in this great scene from the story titled The Forest of the Night. But what a beautiful, beautiful all art from bottom to top. Beautiful, gorgeous cover signed on in, in the planet below by the great Matt Haley, pencils and inks. Beautiful cover. From uh, yeah, you don't have the year on it, but yeah. I believe this is from yeah, I, yeah, I don't know, but uh, it's from around 2000 or late 90s, something like 2000. But but anyway, it's a little older, but cool cover. I forgot to put the year down on it, but artistically, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover in all inks. Next okay, one? the next one. Lot 35. Steve Ditko, Pencils and Inks, twice up art for just $2,000. Now, this is a really cool pencil and ink book. It was a book called Revolver, number one, but it was drawn earlier. This was supposed to be drawn for a book called Astral Frontier, number one, but it was canceled before it saw publication. Then it ended up getting published in 1982 for a book called Revolver Number One, and it's page five to the story. But again, pencils and inks, Steve Ditko, and it's twice up art uh, with a 12 by 18 inch art image. Just really cool, beautiful space battle with creatures and everything. But again, I emphasize pencils and inks, Steve Ditko, well over 40 years old, and, and, and action throughout the entire page. It's, not, it's, well, it's well under 40 years old, Pops. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, it was published in 82, but I believe it was drawn earlier. All right. Because it got published in 82, and it was drawn for an earlier book. 
But I mean, I don't know where you're going to find Steve Ditko pencils and inks for for something so cool. If you want a Ditko example in your collection without without paying an arm and a leg for Doctor Strange or Spider Man, this is this is one for you. And and every panel is set up so beautifully, and you got that big spread in the middle. It's or a beauty. Even, and he even used the razor. He even used the razor cuts to show the action lines. Beautiful, beautiful there, folks. Just beautiful. It is beautiful. Hey, Nick, thank you for getting us over 110 likes. I Th appreciate it. Thanks. So, so pops. Thank you, Nicholas. And we all love dynamite comics. <laughs> all right, on the lot 36. Another DC cover. Barry Kitson, oh my goodness, Azrael cover to number 25 from the story Angel at War, The Fall of St. Dumas. Ezrael holds his magical fire sword above his head, sort of like He-Man in the Masters of the Universe, as he gets ready to battle, battle a dozen demons. Wow. Signed by both artists at the bottom, and this is a little oversized. Very, very cool. Uh, Barry Kitson, inked by James Pasco, who we've had on our show a couple times. Mm -hmm. But Azrael, number 25, and oddly enough, folks, this is 25 years old. How about that? Wow. Published DC cover. Great Azrael cover there, folks, for just 2000 You've got uh, shoes and socks wow. older than 25 years. Wow. And there's even a couple of, a little bit of a pencil drawing on the back, too. With the DC stamp. And that's something, Junior? Yes. Yes, Pops. Thanks. All right. On to. Oh, we're doing some historical artists here, folks. Lot 37. Oh, my goodness. Rush Manning pencils and inks from 1964. Korak, son of Tarzan. Large art. Great image. T Korak throughout the entire page with some gorillas. Just a great page. From the story titled Captive of the Vulture. Beautiful Silver Age large art page with Korak, his gorilla friend, and Jeremy Carter on a mission to save a captive girl from the Bakusi tribe. Again, art image is 12 by 18, and it's all Russ Manning pencils and inks. Beautiful Silver Age Russ Manning published page. You don't find those every day, Junior. No, you don't. No, you don't. Look, and that's my... And, and that's almost Indiana Jones could almost come in and say hi to these people. I was just going to say, I've talked with them before. Yeah, we've... And it's we've, been Indiana Jones, Pops. Oh, Bindi. Okay, son. Uh, I mean, Junior. I mean, Bindi. Yeah. And that's the plane I was... That's the plane you were grabbing on the wing on, I think, there at the beginning of the show. Yes, it might have been. might have been. Wow. Pencils and inks. Rush Manning. Rush Manning. All right. <laughs> and what did the, what did you tell them before you show that? What, what did you say about the Berkey Warehouse at the beginning of the episode? It was from what? I said that we've been looking for it for 10 years. Is that what you're talking no, about? No, no. You said the oh, logo. Oh, the logo. I used the Star Wars file. Star Wars! Oh! oh! John Romita Sr. Pets and Inks from Droids Number 1. And John Romita actually signed it right here. You have C3 PP. I'm sorry. C3PO and R2D2 on a large art page. John Romain only did, I think, one or two stories ever. This is really oversized art, too. And it's signed in pencil. John Romain has signed his name at the top there, right behind the 19. That is John's actual handwriting. But you got a great page from the story The Destroyer. Rare John Romita Sr. Star Wars page featuring R2-D2, C-3PO, and Ranger X-1, which is the big robot. And signed by Romita at the top from 1985. This is 36 years old. Penciled by John Romita and inked by uh, 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 Garzon, Jose Garzon, who inked Mike McNoll on Cosmic Odyssey. But just a rare time to get John Romita senior pencil inks. And you got C3PO and R2D2 in a couple panels each. And that thigh gap on the robot. The thigh gap. Well, he's a robot. Yes, that's true. He doesn't really need any. Uh... And you actually managed to squeeze in a Cosmic Odyssey reference today. Yes. Jose Garzon, inker, same inker. Uh... Yeah, well, the robot should have a thigh gap because he doesn't need any reproductive organs. Wow, that's pretty analytical there, Pops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're uh, into vintage art and vintage artists today folks for this bin dive just so you know this next piece the beautiful 
Jose Gonzalez, pencils, inks, and wash tones, and twice up from Vampirilla number 25 from the story titled What Price Love, created an ink, ink wash over pencil on Bristol board. Beautiful, drawn on 14.2 by 20.2 inch. One of the word balloons fell off. I'll put it back on. It's just a glue stain. It goes right there. It had fallen off, so that's why I put it back in the bag. But all the word balloons are there. Just a beautiful page. Vampirilla just killed a prison guard and sucked his blood, and she's running away as another as another uh, prison guard tries to shoot at her. And there's the guy. She sucked all the blood out of his neck there at the bottom. But beautiful images of Vampirilla there from 1973. Beautiful 48-year-old Jose Gonzalez page. You know, early on, this is one of her earliest stories because early on she was just the, the narrator of the story and she didn't start getting her own stories until later on in the run. So this is one of her earlier stories in the run from 1973 by who's considered the greatest vampirol artist ever, Jose Gonzalez. And it's twice up, drawn on 14.2 by 20.2 inch artboard. Hey, Pops, we had a question on that Star Wars art. Yes. Uh, from Scott Wingo. Is that Star Wars art, art twice up? And it, I mean, it is bigger. Yes. It's bigger than twice up. Yeah. Let's see. I thought I had a. Did you I thought I had that. Uh, I didn't. No. But, but, it is, but it it's, actually, it's actually bigger than twice up. The art image is at least 12 by 18. I should have brought my ruler. I'm not going to do the Anthony hands. I'm sorry. But the art is over 12 by 18. And the board is bigger. The, it's actually drawn on bigger than twice up board. So it's bigger. It's bigger than twice. It's twice up at least, or bigger, by the great John Romita, and signed at the top. I've owned very few ever of these pages ever. All right. Well, thanks for answering that question, pops. Yes. Let's get your next artwork up here. Another DC cover. I can't believe it. Glenn Fabre painted cover to the authority number five from the story as free as the wind blows. That's a song. I think it sounds like born free. Don't start singing. Pop. But born free. Uh, from the group authority, we have a great image of the guy called the Midnighter who looks like a more menacing roughneck Batman as he gets ready to swing his bloody bat. With a nail in it, almost you can almost almost looks like Negan from uh, Walking Dead. I thought you were gonna say Batlash. But a uh, Batlash could be Batlash. But a beautiful published painted authority covered by the great Glenn Fabre, and it's signed and dated 2005. Beautiful, beautiful painted published cover. Wow, that's what Chuck Arnold said. Wow, drawn on thick illustration board. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Beautiful cover. On to the next. And this is, uh, can you even? Wow. That one right there. Oh, that, not, is that the next? That, yeah. Lot okay. 41. Is, Lot 41. This is yeah, huge. I'll, I'll leave this off for a second. This is huge. This is a, a huge book novel illustration. Published cover. Uh, we'll show the published image for an artist named Jack Goggin. Uh, 1975. This painting is 24 by 30 inches painted. Beautiful. It is called Cap Kennedy number 14. It, the book is called The Ghosts of Epidaurus. Rendered in acrylics on canvas for it. This painting was originally purchased at the 1976 Playboy Science Fiction Convention in New Jersey. And it's been with its in possession of the original owner until he passed away in 2021. But anyway, the published cover to Cap Kennedy number 14, The Ghost of Epidaurus by Jack Goggin. And it's done in acrylic, and it's from 1975, and it's 24 by 30 inches. And there's the published book on the side. Just a beautiful sci-fi painted cover. And it's signed at the bottom there by the guy's butt, just below there. But a beautiful 20 by 30, 24 by 30 inch painting. Awesome. For you sci-fi fans out there, very, very cool. And, and uh, you did get an offer from Scott Wingo on the Star Wars piece. 
that uh, the offer was eighteen hundred dollars. What did I have on it? You had twenty two. Uh, if we twenty three, yeah, twenty three. I'm 20? sorry. Yes. Uh, Scott, Scott, I'll do two thousand before we get to the recap. I'll knock off three hundred dollars. So if you're interested, say yay before somebody else does. Or but it's two thousand. Uh, for whoever wants it with R2D2 and C3PO, John Ramita from the 1980s. John Ramita Sr. I'll do 2000 before we get to recap. Thank you, Richard Del Mendo, for becoming a member of the channel. We really appreciate it. Hi, Rich. All right, on to your next. I'm still page. holding your Silver Age page for you. Right, lot 42. Lot 42, another big cover painting. I, I actually had this comic book as a kid. My older brothers got it when I was a kid. I actually had this George Wilson Ripley's Believe It or Not number 33 cover painting. I know it doesn't, you don't get the full detail, but I love this with a cloaked skeleton dragging a casket through a house. The detail on this is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the published cover Ripley's Believe It or Not number 33 from 1972. This is 49 years old. From the story, The Curse of the Black Monk. Uh, again, I just love cloaked skeletons to me are awesome. I love the cool skull candle holder there that's still lit. Produced in gauche on thick illustration board. 12 by 15 and a half on 15 by 20 inch artboard. Just a beautiful, beautiful George Wilson published, painted horror cover as the butler opens up the door and freaks out. At the skeleton, cloak skeleton, but beautiful, beautiful detail piece. I'm a little farther away, so you don't get the full detail, but beautiful piece. I agree. Now we've got a couple offers here that we got to look at, Pops. All right. Okay. So let's see. Your first offer came from uh, David Wetzel, and that was on lot 10. He was offering 500. Let me get that back on the screen so you can take a look at it. And yeah, we have a little bit of time. Yeah. Show Simon. So, uh, he was offering you 500 on what did we have on it? I have it up on the screen. 600. Oh, 600. Okay, we'll, we'll take the 500. That's fine. All right, David, thank you very much. You Thanks, have Dave. Got that. I said, Where are you going to find a, a great image of a Captain America by his co creator for 500 bucks? That is awesome. That's yours. All right, and then the second one was on lot 18, and this came from Richard. He was offering. 18 or wait, let me get you eight hundred dollars and we'll get lot 18 up there so you can see it for yourself. Uh I had 900 on it. You're offering 800 Rich, I'll do that as well. All right. Fantastic. So uh, lot let's 18. see. Let me pull that for you. Yeah, 800 to Richard. Thank you. The 1955 large art page from Atlas from Snafu number one. 800 bucks for you. That's a go. Yeah, that's a good one. I was uh, surprised. That's a doozy. I'm surprised it didn't go. Yeah. Where are you going to find twice up wash tone art by a master? You know, uh, that, yeah, that, was, wow. that was awesome. Any other offers, folks? Let me know. All right. We, so, we're always, we always are taking offers. On yeah. It. So there you go. David's and, confirmed and, his plan. It never hurts to chat about stuff, folks. We're, we're easy going here. Right. Right. We can always break in between the lots. And we're getting, sure. we're getting through these. So Yeah, uh, it ain't like we have a dueling dealer. So we could always go back to pieces. If you have questions on something, or if you want to see something closer, we'll go back to the piece and show it again. Because we have we're all together here with uh without, uh, without, without, Anthony. without, without Anthony, so it's a little easier going. Oh, oh yeah. I'm just teasing Anthony. We did have a meme lined up uh with uh us and Anthony, but we, I didn't put it together, unfortunately. It'll be a meme that shows up on doing maybe we'll do it on Wednesday or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so here let's uh, go to lot 43. Lot 43, we're getting to the good stuff now, folks. Bernie Krigstein, Pencils and Inks, EC. Wow. Check this out. From Aces High, number two, page two. Beautiful, beautiful page. With the flying World War II, I'm sorry, World War I battle story titled The Mascot. Uh, Bernie Krigstein, very very little of his art from the EC is, is just out there, but just a great... World War One action page uh, from the uh, from the story of the mascot with with uh, great panels drawn twice up. This is from 1954, folks. This is 67 years old. Beautiful twice up Krigstein page, pencils and inks from EC by the great Bernie. 
freak speed. Love that page too. Yeah. And I saw Scott offered the uh, 1800 on me, John Romita Sr. Again, you were at 2000 on that one though. And that you were low. Yeah. If we can go 2000, uh, I'll do the 2000 on it. Let me know. Need to drink oh, a water there? Pops. No, no, no. Oh, I just had. All right. All right. So moving right along. Let's get the next one up here. Lot 44. Lot 44. This is a doozy. I just got it in. Oh, the bet Rom, the early Rom, the best battle pays to the story from just the, into the first year of this of the of the book. Uh, Rom one came out in 79. This is from 1980. Awesome battle page with Rom in every panel battling. Pencil and inks by the great Sal Basema. Rom number 16, page 18. From the story, Watch Wraith. Arguably the best battle page in the book with Ram in every panel as he battles and calls, he calls the Watch Wraith, I thought it was neat, he calls the Watch Wraith a Terminator four years before Arnold becomes Terminator. So just a very cool 1980, phenomenal all-out battle page with Ram battling the Wire Wraith in every panel. So... They're just hard. It's just hard to find great early ROM pages. I saw at auction, man, a couple of early, a couple of ROM pages from this area have all gone for over three thousand dollars at auction. So uh, I just got it in, and uh, that's that one. Wanted to have it on the show to have some marble bronze age to show off. So good. that's that it's a good one. page. You don't see enough ROM out there. Like, yeah, that's very very true. Why is my camera? Auto it's focusing and auto focusing. It's not supposed to do that. That's all right. That's all right, sir. All right, moving. Oh, right we're on. getting to the nitty gritty now at the end, boy. The doozies. Moving to lot forty-five. Oh, and we're it's, getting blurry. We're getting yeah. blurry. Oh, there we came back. Yeah, here we go. Dick, Jack Kirby, Dick Ears, Large Art Tales to Astonish, number thirty-one, page two. This is a really funny story, almost about our hobby, because this is a guy who is an artist, and a magic pencil falls out of a UFO, and anything he draws comes to life. So he drew himself as on this page, he drew himself as the king of the world. So now he's the king of the world. And all his subjects don't believe him. And he goes, You gotta believe me. You gotta believe me. It was this magic pen. He goes, Here it is. Let me draw the spaceship that dropped the pen. And then at the end, there's the spaceship. And then it's really cool. On the next page, a large tentacled creature comes out and says, You don't deserve this. And the creature takes the pencil away from him on the next page. But he had everything. He had money, he was president, and he wanted to be king of the world. And he looks just like Reed Richards. And this came out the same month as Fantastic Four, number four, the first Submariner. So a very, very cool 1961 Kirby Ears page. As very, very said, cool. A king by the king. Yes, that is true. The king, very cool. And great artwork on that one. Just a great artwork on that one. Stop drinking there, sir. Long live the king. Oh, long live the king. Hail the majesty, ruler of all earth's people. So you should do that in, in homage to Jack Kirby. In homage. In homage. I say homage. I know. But, you uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, all right. But uh, twice up, 1961, 60 years old by the king for just 3500 bucks. I know that's a great page. Next on to lot 46. This is a very unique page here, folks. Get ready. Oh, check this out. Al Williamson pencils, okay? Al Williamson pencils, Angelo Torres, and Roy Crankel inks. This is from Blast Off number one. This was originally drawn to be an Alarming Tales number four in the 50s. It, it, oh, it's 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 uh, dated March, uh, March 1958 on the back. It has a stamp, my birthday, March 6th, but a different year. 1958, before I was born, Junior. Well, you're as old but as anyway, you're Al Williamson pencils, Angelo Torres, and Roy Crankle links. Uh, great page. Let's see this. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. This story was yeah, it was originally produced in 1958 for Alarming Tales four, and then they actually published it in the 1960s in Blast Off number one. But it was drawn and it's stamped in the back. And there's a ton of pencil drawings all over the back of it. But as a it has a Commerce Code Authority stamp, March 6th, 1958, on the back. And there's tons of different pencil doodles by Williamson on the back of it. But just a very cool piece. Uh, they even use Zipatone on it. And, again, it got 
published in 1965, but it was drawn in 58. Oh, the, t the title of the movie was called Space Court. I think somebody's at your front door, Pops. Very, very cool. Well, I'm not letting them in. <laughs> very, very cool. 1958 page. Hold on. Let me see who's at my door. Hello. They've left. Oh. All right. On to the next artwork. Hold on. You want me to... Uh, I don't know. Hey, if you want to go answer your door, you're more than welcome to. Hello. Man. They're not answering. Hey. Yeah, you're yelling into the microphone now. Okay. Okay. Anyway, th no, no, we we take precedence. Yes, we do. Neighbors cannot come, come back. That is quite true. Quite true. All right. I'm okay. A lot. Uh, oh. What we got here? Forty-seven. Forty-seven, sir. Steve Ditko, inked by Wally Wood. Holy Toledo. Thunder Agents, number twelve, page seven. We have a great from the story. Uh, let's see. Uh, from the story, strength is not enough. I emphasize, Ditko and Wood only did two stories ever for ACG. Ever, ever. For uh, I'm sorry, for Tower. For Tower. And this is one of the stories. Dynamo in every panel with Rocky. I'm sorry, there was only three stories they did. This was the third story. Only three stories. Ditko pencils, Wood inks, Dynamo is featured throughout the entire page. From the story, strength is not enough where Rocky gets some bad news about his life and who he is, and he becomes a good guy. But again, Steve Ditko, Ink by Wally Wood, 1960s, twice up, 12 by 18 art image on larger board. You're reading some fun I'm reading the, yeah, everybody thought Anthony was at the door. Wanting to oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Anthony's locked out. Unless he's bringing cake. Well, he said we might, might have been the pizza delivery man, too. Oh, yeah, no. 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 All right. Not yet. Not yet. But a great battle page. Look at that. As as Rocky actually saves Dynamo from the evil evil guys. But again, Ditko Ink by Wood doesn't get much better than that, folks. No, it does so, not, sir. No, it does not. It's a beautiful twice up page. Yep, from nineteen. It's stamped. Yeah, nineteen sixty six. Oh, I wrote sixty seven. It's actually from 19, October sixty six. Stamp on the back. All right, on the right. lot 48. Right after, that's literally right after Ditko left Spider-Man. Oh, oh, wow. Don Heck, 1964. Holy moly. Don Heck, Iron Man battling Atuma and his minions. Tales of Suspense, 196, uh, Tales of Suspense, 66, from 1964, page 10. Great page. From the artist that drew the first Iron Man comic book in Tales of Suspense 39. This is Don Heck, inked by the great Mike Esposito from the story titled, If I Fail, a World Dies. This awesome page, Iron Man is in every panel battling Atuma and his Atlantean army. Wow. Twice up, 64. Very cool. Doesn't get much better than that, folks. Look, even he's using his little chest light and everything. And look at that top spread. Wow. Rocket-like, it says at the top. Rocket-like. Look at that. They're already talking about Rocket Raccoon like 20 years before he appeared, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that's a beautiful page. A beautiful 1964 page from Tales of Suspense, 66. All right. Two more of the high-priced ones before we've got five. Lower price stars. Five, five more. So lot 49 right here. Lot 49, folks. Neil Adams, inked by Bernie Wrightson. Holy, the only issue of Green Lantern. Green Lantern 84, just a great page. Wow. From the, from the famous Green Lantern story here, as Green Lantern is held captive by the Black Hand, talking about how he's going to turn people all against him at the bottom and everything, with Carol Ferris and everything. But look at that, uh, uh, where he unmasks. And he has Green Lantern captured, tied down with chains around his wrist. But again, Neil Adams, inked by Bernie Wrightson, 1971. The only issue they ever worked on Green Lantern together. 50 years old, folks. Where are you going to find that? Neil Adams and Bernie Wrightson. Wow. The detail on this is just extraordinary. It's just extraordinary, Junior. I can't argue with you, Pops. So that is lot 49. Wow. All right. And hey, Scott Wingo did throw you another offer on that ROM page at 1900 and you were at 2800 Yeah, I can't do that. I'm sorry on that one. 
No counter at this point, sir? Uh, I have 28 on it. I'll do 26. Okay. Because I, I know it, it'll sell. What, did Scott make, was Scott the same guy that made the offer on the Ramita? Yes. Yes. Scott, I'll, what I will do is just to be nice, I'll go for, I was at 2000. I'll do 1900 on the Ramita. Okay, 1900 Ram. I'm assuming you're meaning Ramita. So I'll do 1900 no. on the Ramita droids. I know. But you said he was the same one that made that offer, right? That's correct. So you're even okay. I'm going to go to nine from 2000 to 1900 oh. on the droids. Yeah. All right. Well, at least you've thrown that. So out. I'll do that. Uh, oh, we had an offer at 2001 on the Krikstein. That uh, just came in as well. What we, did, What did we have on that? Uh, we had uh, 2500 dollars on that. 2500. Uh, Mark, if we can meet in the middle at 2250, I'll do that. And time payments are, are fine also. Well, I mean, I could show it again. The Krikstein. Sure, if you want. That was the uh, ACSI. Yes, Perky oh. made it funny. Imagine yeah. that. How about that, huh? Beautiful page. Yeah, that is a gorgeous page. I love the World War One planes at the bottom and everything. 1954. <laughs> yeah, Brian Lasser offered you uh, two dollars for the rights. Two dollars? Yeah. <laughs> two dollars. What's your best price on that Razor cover? All right. So we, I guess we're on to lot 50 then, right? Because I, I did not see. Uh, I, I know that Scott said he's got a bad kid. He's like on his phone or something like that. So he might oh. be a delayed to. Uh... So 1900 on the Ramita that you offered 1800 on, I'll do. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to, yeah, your lot 50. Lot 50, the last one. DC cover again. Murphy Anderson, pencils and inks. Strange Adventures number 162 cover from the story titled The Tw Mystery of the 12 O'Clock Man. And all this at the bottom, all this at the bottom is drawn. This is all drawn. Even, even the wording and everything, this is all drawn. That's all art. And uh, this is stat. They stat this is all art in the center. The little radar detector, they statted it in the rocket for the first and third panels. But it's all art here. And all the wording is all art. All the lettering is all drawn and everything. Stat logo, of course. But large art, 1964 cover, pencil and inks by Murphy Anderson, twice up, DC by one of the masters. Very cool piece by a great artist. And it's very cool. It's almost noon, and I'm about to vanish again. Three, two, one, zero, boof. Then he appears. I'm back again an hour later. But what happened to me during what time? That time. Will I ever know? Will he ever will will he ever know, Junior? You gotta stay in character, Pops. Will he ever know? All right. So, so hey, that's uh, that one. David Matheny had asked to see uh let's see, what did he want to see? He wanted to see lot 39 once before that vamp for all. So I'll show that one just before we get over to 50. Oh, okay. Uh one. Just a quick second here, just so you can see it. There you go, David. Yeah, here, I can pull it up. Too. No, that's all right, because we got five more to go, and then we'll be in the recap, sir. Okay, yeah. Oh, there you go. Just because uh, I didn't have a bag, because I didn't want the word balloons to fall off. Yeah, but it's twice up. Very cool. I have 2300 on it. I'll do 2100 if you're interested in it right now. And just so you know, this this word blurb here goes right here. So all the word blurbs are there. I'll just, I'll, I can glue it back on with a temporary glue stick. So, But beautiful page, 2100. If anybody wants it before we get to the recap. Jose Gonzalez, pencils and inks and wash tones, all in. Wow. Wow. And hey, uh, let's see. Scott Wingo has claimed the ROM page for 2600. Okay. Not the Ramita. Not the Ramita, but the ROM. Yeah, that's a good page. I'm telling you, those things are hard, hard, hard to find. Let me. Uh, Thank you very much, Scott. There it is. That's yours, buddy. Beautiful. Page stamped on the back. That's yours. All right, let's go down to the last five pieces and we'll okay. get recap rolling and get out of here faster than an episode of Doom Dealer. Oh, happy days. And going through 55 pieces. Yeah, yeah. We okay, we got five more. Yeah, just I at like the very end. The pace of this show, sir. Bindiana wanted me to put just a couple more, so I figured I'd do an extra five bonus pieces just to show off uh, and offer to everybody. Uh, let's see here. You got them there, yeah. sir? Oh, they're still in the bags. Oh, that's all right. My scans are better than... Okay. All right, you ready for 51? Yep. All, all right. set. 
There you go. This is very cool. I thought it was published. Uh, I found out Doc, the original Dr. Solar went to 31 issues. This is 32 by the by Dan Spiegel. So I believe it's unpublished, but it's stamped uh, 1982 on the bottom. But I, that's why I priced it as such, just 900 bucks. But it's 40, almost 40 years old. And again, the original run went to 31. And it says right at the bottom, Dr. Solar 32. I couldn't find an image. It's really nicely drawn. Beautiful image of Dr. Solar saving a man and a woman in a tunnel as everything is going crazy. But uh, just 900 bucks. Dan Spiegel signed in the art, pencils and inks, 1982. Uh, very cool. So $900, Dr. Solar number 32. From the original run, it, what issue 32 would have been when it only went 31? There you That's go. That hey, Cat Taka did ask earlier what your best price was on, or you know, on the uh, razor, the Steve Scott piece. Oh, what was, did we have on it? That was lot twenty-five. You had twelve hundred dollars on it. it I'll, to get, I'll do a thousand on it. Uh, I'll do a thousand on it before we go to recap. Okay, well, we're almost. At uh, recap. So uh, that if you there. say yay on the side, I'll pull it so you can look at it one more time, and it's yours for a thousand. The razor, really nice, beautiful razor uncut cover. All right, let's look at uh, lot fifty-two. Lot 52, very cool. This is published. It's stamped Marvel 1981. I believe it's a Savage Sword pinup. Uh, Tony, I say De Zaniga. Some people say De Zaniga. But it's a beautiful Conan uh, splash page. It's stamped page 39 on the bottom. Conan leaping off a horse at these uh, uh, barbarians uh, with swords. And again, it says page 39 at the bottom. And it's stamped, it even says 50%. So there's the production notes on it. It's signed by Tony at the top. And it's stamped on 1981, also on the back of the page. But I haven't found the issue yet. But it is a published Savage Sword Splash. Uh, so I thought for the price, that's pretty reasonable. Just 1300 bucks. 40 years old, published Conan Splash. 1300 bucks. All right, that's a good price, sir. Yeah. On to lot 53. Lot 53. We almost wish we had Thumbelina Thor here. Mike Vosberg published full splash of Thor smashing his hammer. This is Shoot. awesome. Wow. This is Thor published by Mike Vosberg. Believe it or not, it's from Cloak and Dagger number nine. Thor guest stars in it from 1989. This is 30. Two years old, Thor smashes the villain against the amp, the villain known as the Rock. But it's the published splash, and there's the image of the last splash. For oh, I say the day for Odin. Wait, wait, I'll do it in uh, Sean Connery. I say the day that Sean Connery as as Thor. Full splash of Thor smashing his hammer, where it says shoom. For Odin, for Asgard. For Odin, Thor rings down blow after blow on Rock's shell. Very cool full Thor splash there, folks, from 1989. Two more pieces, Pops. Two more lot, pieces. Lot 54 right lot here. Lot 54. Oh, very cool. Check this out. Jack Davis, full painting, 9 by 22 inches. This is all painting. And uh, I don't, it's not signed, but uh, it's all Jack Davis. Beautiful painting of the Civil War General Joseph Wheeler. Uh, beautiful nine inches by 22 on textured artboard. But uh, beautiful full painting by the great Jack Davis. These are sold for really good money at auctions. So very, very cool full painting of the Civil War General and it's a full painting by the great Jack Davis. I thought that was really cool. I agree. I like that one, Pops. Yeah. Very cool. You fought in the Civil War, didn't you? No, a little before my time, Junior. All right. Well, you could have fooled me. Yeah. All right. Final lot before we go to the recap. This is lot 55. The final lot. Very cool. I found this online. I don't know who the babe is, but Jim Ballant, just beautiful pencils and inks. And it's a publish from Acclaim. It says Property of Acclaim. I found it online. It's like a promo, but I don't know who the character is. I know they did a book called Witch, Witch something. But uh, it's Jim Ballant, 1998. Beautiful, beautiful babe pinup with a Tyrannosaurus. 
couple of tyrannosauruses and different lizards and prehistoric creatures all around her. This beautiful babe. And it's, again, it's from 1998, right when he was drawing the Catwoman uh, book for DC. But a beautiful, it is published but from acclaim, but I don't know the character. But I just thought it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, beautiful dinosaurs all around the sexy, sexy babe. And there's, again, the color image to show you what it was used for. It was like a promo poster for Acclaim Comics with the character. And just $1,500. 23 years old. <laughs> By the great Jim Ballant Pencils and Inks. So that's that one. There you go. And, and uh, Michael, we, uh, Pops did not pull that piece of artwork, unfortunately. So, which one? Uh, the oh. the Bogdan. We'll do that. We'll do that next time. Yeah. Which one was it? Was it Superman? Yeah, that was the. the, the yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, with the red and the. Okay, we'll have that in a in a real soon upcoming dueling dealers. Yeah, that was a really nice page, Michael. It's that, a double spread. It was. We'll have that coming up real soon. How about that? All right, so on to the recap. Are you ready for this? We're ready, Junior. You need a, you need a drink of water? Uh, one one little sip of water, sure. All right, yeah. And like I said, people, no offense. If we, you, know, you can make offers on the sides. If we can work it out, great. If we can't, it'll be on the website. But if, obviously, you're nice enough to be watching us live, so I want to always give you first dibs on everything. That's, That's right. the whole point of this show. And I've got Mike's email address up there, so if you are leaving and you've claimed any artwork tonight, be sure. You don't want to leave. I know you don't want to leave. You don't want to leave, but if you're going to leave, there's Mike's email address. Let him know which artwork you picked I up. I always tell you, Junior, don't say if you want to. Just say, here's his address. There's his, address. his address. You want to let him know what your mailing address is and what artwork you picked up. And again, to make things easier, our, our, we do like checks. But again, we I can also start taking Venmo and Zelle with my email address if that helps you for payments. But always email me with what you got and your full address just so I have it. So that way I can just print it out, even if we've done deals in the past. Always email me your address just so I could hit a button and print it out and have it with your art. It makes things a lot easier for me. And again, time payments on bigger items are always fine. So uh, sounds good. Well, so a couple of things here. I saw Kat did offer, I believe, $1,200 on the, the balance piece, a lot 55. Uh, you were, you were $1,500. Uh, can we, uh, Kat, can we do $1,300 and it's yours? I was gonna say thirteen fifty, but just thirteen hundred and it's yours. Let me uh, pull that. That was your yeah, the bottom. Yeah. yeah, the bottom of your pile, and then there was another offer that popped in as well. Well, a couple other offers actually. Yeah, here's that one. Right. Beautiful piece, thirteen hundred, and it's yours. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. Like I said, it shows better. There's a glare, and it shows better on there. But if we do thirteen hundred, it's yours. All right. Well, it looks like uh, Kat. I'm gonna I'm gonna pencil you down for that one, and because uh, it looks like uh, I I think everybody agrees that that was a uh, that's a good price, and I think you're picking that one up. So I'm gonna write that down for you. Did they say okay. Well, uh, well, I don't know. Oh, we'll we see. have a couple of them. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, let's, yeah, we'll let's wait and see. Line. We'll wait and see if Kat agrees to the thirteen hundred or not. Okay. But there were two other offers that came in. Okay. Yeah, let me try to get it back in there to the first one. Uh, this one was was from. Mr. Alvarez, 1750 on your 36. That yeah, was, I'll just pull it up on the screen for you. Yeah, it gets it. 2000. What was it? What was his offer? 1750. Sounds like a fair offer to me, Pops. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just do 1800 before we get to the recap and it's yours? See on that, I have to take a sip of water. If you can agree to 1800, that's fine. And that was on your lot 36. Okay, 1800. Back to you, Caesar, on that Just one. Just let me know on that. And then the other offer that came through was, uh, let's see, uh, from Gabe. He was offering you 1000 for lots. Oh, 12 and 13. Uh, 12 and 13. Yeah, that was uh, the two trimpies that you would have been at $1,300 at. Uh, Gabe, we'll do that. All right. I'm not going to pull those. Uh, images up yeah, those are both the trimpies. Yeah, that was lots 12 and 13. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna just grab them for him. Yeah, here they are. That's a nice combo for you there, Gabe. Hey, those are both yours. Thousand for the pair. All right. And am I missing any other ones here? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a couple more. Okay. There was the uh, lot 51. Is that, that new? That the the, cat? Well, yeah. let's get down to okay, here for, yeah. Yeah, for Ilya. What, what I have on the solar again? You had 900. 
Uh, Ilya, can you do 800? I'll do 800 on it. Uh, let me know about the 800 on the solar, and it's yours for the 800. All right, and then Kat was countering with you at 1250. You know what? Let's just do the 1250. Kat's a good customer. So, Kat, you got that for the 1250. Uh, that's right here. Yep. Kat gets that for 1250. All right, very good. And uh, Mr. Alvarez has uh, agreed to, at 1800. That was uh, for what again? That was on number 36. That was the kitchen as real. Oh, yeah, the kitchen as real. Okay, that's 36 to kitchen. Yep. Let's, see, let's see, pick that up. And uh, just pull that one up for Kat. Yes, Kat, very good. Thank you. And uh, all right, yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah. And uh, yep, yeah, that's yours. And uh, 800 on the solar, uh, Caesar. Let me know if that works or no, no, it wasn't Caesar. Ilya, Ilya, yes, it was Ilya that you countered at 800. Let me know, Ilya, on that. All right, so let's go uh, all the way to the top, right? Okay, you ready for that, Pops? All right, we are all going all the way back to your lot one, so let's get this thing started. And lot one, this is the uh, Grell stable piece here at 250. Yeah, uh, we'll do 200 bucks. Uh, John Sables in every panel, $200. Mike Grell, pencil and inks. Annie signed it in ink at the top. Very, very cool. 200 bucks for a John Sable page. Pencils and inks. All right. And Ilya's going to wait till the side on, uh, on the recap and uh, leave. You know what? I'll tell you what. Ilya, we'll just do the 750 Because uh, that'd be last. So, Ilya, we'll do the 750 on the... Uh, that was it. Yeah, Dr. Solar. Yep, lot 51 to Ilya. Let me pull that for you. 750. All right. And you're welcome, Ilya. Before you keep get... watching. That's I promise. Promise to keep watching. Yep, yep. Oh, there's where the wheel end dealing occurs. And there's right. a couple more. Crandall, I saw something. Right. Well, there was the, the lot 21 read Crandall. Uh, what do we have on that? That one you had 950 on it. 950. Yeah. Lee, can you do 850 on the read Crandall and it's yours before we even get the recap? 850. Yeah, that was uh yeah. there All right, so you're you're asking you're countering with 850. 850 if you want it. All right. So shall we uh yeah? You know? Let me know 850 on that. And it's yours. Okay. So you were 200 on your uh, lot one, so we're gonna go over to your lot two. Yeah, 200 on this. Actually, I'll do 175 just to keep things going because I like to keep things fresh. 175 on the sable. All right. Lot two. You were at 275 on this. Lot one. two. We'll do, uh, what the heck? 200 bucks. I was going to say two and a quarter. 200 bucks. The co creator of the Green Lantern, Martin Nodell. Pencils and inks. It's almost 30 years old. It's 29 years old. Pencils, inks, hand colored. Great image of him shooting his uh, ring. 200 bucks. By the great Martin Nodell. All right, two hundred dollars on your lot two. Let's go over to lot three. You had gone to uh, you'd lower your price to three fifty on this one already. Right? Did somebody? We may have an offer of three hundred on it. I believe so. That was a while back. I don't remember. Yeah, it was four. Uh, whoever offered the three hundred, or if anybody, I'll do the three hundred just to keep things going. The first three hundred. Uh, in the comments, was it? I don't remember who it was. I can't remember. All right, well, it's three hundred dollars, ladies and gentlemen, for lot three. So we can move over. Three hundred bucks. Two. We'll see what do we got. Lot four. Oh, this is the. Can uh, you still read comments too while you're doing that? Or no? I was just curious. There you go. Oh, see? there you go. Okay, Wes, it's yours. Yes, I can still read comments, and I've got a good memory there, pops. And uh, Lee, let me know on that. Okay. All right, and yep, I'm just pulling that up, so we've got it. So everybody sees Wes picked that one up. Very good. All right, over to lot four. Uh, I have five hundred. I'll do four hundred bucks again. This is this was a, a used published style guide, eleven by seventeen pinup by the great Phil Hester. Beautiful, beautiful, full Batman. Four hundred bucks. That's a beauty. Four hundred bucks. First one to claim it gets it. All right. Next up is that fun Stan Drake. The Stan spotlight. Drake, just a. It's huge. This is 20 by 15. I'll do 350 on it. I just thought, ah, oh, if you're a fan of the movies, I mean, or a music person, Donna Summer, Rod Stewart, even got John Travolta when he looked in from 77. Oh, my goodness. From from uh, 
Saturday Night Fever. Talking from 76. 350 bucks by the great Stan Drake. Uh, $350. All right. That's a huge piece of artwork there, sir. Next up is Lot 6. Lot 6. We had 500 on it. I'll go 400. Green, all the different Green Lanterns in every panel. Lot 6. Oops, sorry about that. So, Ian, you got, you got Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, and you got Hal Jordan uh, from 2006, 15 years old. Real nice page with all of them. 400 bucks. Matter of fact, I'll do 375. I'll do 375. All right, 375 on your lot six. There, Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, and Hal Jordan. And, and throughout the entire page. Really nice. All right, we're going over to lot nine now. This was uh, the Don Heck. Don Heck Thor, uh, 400 bucks. Now, you know what? I'll do 375. I'm lowering it even more. 375. You got Thor all over it. You got Thor in three panels. Wait, what lot was this? Nine. Oh, okay, we did sell that much. Wow. Yes, sir. You got Thor in four panels, the Warriors three, Fandral, Hogan, Volstake, Loki in two panels, and the goddess uh, Freya. So you have everybody. I mean, there's a whole lot going on from the story, from the story, the theft of Thor's hammer. 375. All right, and that was picked up by Larry Boxel. Hey, thanks, Larry. Pencil and inks by the great Don Heck. I mean, Don Heck was... Drawn from Marvel in the 50s in Atlas, you know. Wow. So that's a good, inexpensive, really cool page with a lot of characters. Thanks. Or over to lot 11, the crocodile strip. I will do 500 on this. 500. 1947. Tarzan in some facet in every panel battling a crocodile. 500 bucks. This is 74 years old. 500 bucks. 20.25 inches across. It's a large, it's a long strip. Five hundred dollars. Very cool piece. All right, it's a good price on your so that's lot that one. eleven artwork. Let's see. Next up is lot fifteen. Lot fifteen. Is that the flute? Yes, it is. This is beautiful. I'll knock off a hundred more dollars. I go six fifty on it. I mean, the detail on this thing is amazing. Done on eleven by seventeen uh, paper. Uh, a beautiful Rip Van Winkle, it's titled. So I think I believe a painting or this was was made for it. So 650. All Mike Plug, super duper detailed pencils and signed at the bottom. You're not gonna find Mike Plug uh like from that era for that cheap. Beautiful, beautiful. Matter of fact, yeah, uh, I was just checking to see if we have anything on the comments just to see. Oh, well, does it let you know? Yeah, yes, sir, it does. Oh, I, I didn't even know. Okay. Oh yeah. You know what? Today, I'll do 600 before the end of the show on this, 600. All right, so uh, 600 on lot 15. So six, lot 16 through 19 did sell, so we'll go over to lot 20. Wow, so 600 bucks on that, folks. You're not going to find a cheaper plug. We're on what lot? Lot 20. This was the Arsenal number two cover. Ah. Robert Mays. You had $900 on this one. Lot 20. Uh, DC cover, 900. I'll go 800 bucks. Published cover, Green Arrow. And Arsenal, two images of two big images of Green Arrow on it. Published cover, DC from 1998, 23 years old, eight hundred dollars. Oh, and I will say there is a uh, there is a couple of bends on the side, but it's where there's no artwork. But there are a couple of bends right here. I'm just noticing, but it's where there's no art drawn. Thankfully, matter of fact, I'll do seven fifty. Seven fifty. You'll never find a Green Arrow cover for $750. Oh, we got a claim on the Plug? Yes, we do. Hydra, that's a great buy. $600. Bucks. That's a, I'm telling you, I didn't really get the full, but the image, that's a beautiful piece. You're going to love it. Thank you. Thank you, Hydra. And uh, I said, I'll $750 published DC cover. Right there, you see the published 1998, 1990 stuff is hot. You're never going to find a, Two images of Green Arrow, published cover, 750 bucks. All right, 750 on your lot 20. Next up is your lot 21, and you are, are at 850 oh. on this oh, one. Oh, the Yeah. Uh, this is the one that Lee had, uh, Yeah, Lee, what was your offer on this? I, Lee offered eight, and I said 850. I think he did. 
Uh, Lee, are you still there? Lee, I'll, I'll just – I'll. did he offer eight? I think he offered eight. Lee, I'll do the 800. I want to keep things rolling and keep you happy, buddy. So – Confirm, Lee, yep. for the 800, it's yours. And he just did. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lee. Lee. I want to keep you, keep us going. We'll keep a little keep a little stash of art going and keep little payments going. I love it. All right. On to lot 22. You were at $1,000 on the Sea Devils. This is bridge. such a cool piece, man. Uh, I'll tell you what. I will go. I love this piece. I will go to 850 for it. 850. This is the super. This isn't even a prelim. This is a detailed pencils. And you get 850. And you get the one of a kind. Oh, I know. Uh, Kodak oh. paper. It's on Kodak paper, but the print. This is a one of a kind. This one came with the art and the print. And you get the color print with it too. But all to Sea Devils, 1966. The pencils that he laid out before he did the final cover. That's beautiful. 850, I'll do. Yep, and uh, hey, I just wanted to answer, uh, Samuel Rojas, your answer was correct to Comics Are Go. It was a Facebook claim, uh, the only one, the one from uh, Facebook this oh. evening, and uh, so that's why you don't see it in the YouTube chat if you're scrolling up through through there. But yes, yeah, slot n number nine was claimed by Larry Boxel. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Which one was that one anyway? That was nine, but it came through on Facebook, and that's oh. why the guy didn't see it on uh, YouTube when he was looking through the list. Hey, just to keep things going, I didn't see or nothing. I'll do 800 before the end of the show. 800. All right. And you got the published cover. 800. Look at that. I mean, that is gorgeous. With the Sea Devils on it and the one-of-a-kind uh, film print that came from the artist with the art. So 800 bucks, you get all three pieces. Wheeling and dealing with yep. my dad. Yeah. Yes, Junior. Oh, God, I got to get back in the phone. Junior, yes. Carrie Drake. I will do, this is unheard of, Junior. I don't know if I should be doing this. $900. Wow. $900. I'll knock off $300. Woo. I'm glad I was sitting down. Golden Age, 1940s, Gary Drake cover. The last two that sold at auction two years ago went for $1,380 each. And I think Gary Drake is better on this one than the other two. $900. We have a claim, 23. What's that? Uh, that is, once again, from Facebook from Larry Oh. Marshall. $900 for you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Really cool golden age cover. I mean, where are you going to 70 plus year old cover for under a grand? That's awesome. Yep. Sorry, Daryl. The, the claim came in just before yours, just oh, so you know. Man. And Nick as well. I see they're all popping in there. Very good. But yes, uh, Larry did come in from Facebook. All right. On to, let's see, lot 25. All right, let's get this one over here. So you're faster than I am tonight. I said I, I I agreed. Somebody made an offer. I thought I agree. I'll go a thousand on this. That's the best I can do. I was at twelve hundred. I'll do a thousand. The published cover to razor and cut. I do like how you do this, from now. I think that's awesome. I'm glad you like that. I love how you do that, Junior. Yeah. A thousand bucks. Steve Scott published razor number twenty three cover art from top to bottom. Wow. A thousand dollars on that one. Folks. All right. And that was what I think you counted that to uh, when Kat asked you what your best price was. Oh, is that right? Did yeah. somebody offer? No, mm -hmm. they didn't offer. They just asked you oh, okay. what your best price oh, was. Oh, that's right. I so said 1000 so before we go to the Yeah, so you're sticking at 1000 Yeah. We have no offers or nothing? Uh, well, you, so Kat says she may talk to you uh, on the razor if you hadn't had that oh, down. So, uh, so, yeah, you may hear from Kat. If you well, don't. I'll tell you what. I'll do not. Okay, Kat, I'll do nine. I'll do 950 just for today only. If not, it'll go on the website. I'll do 950. Somebody wants it. Holler. Uh, the Nodell person. If you could do 175, I'll do 175 on the Nodell. 175. That was Ronald Shepard asking or offering. So 150. 950 today only on this. All right. 950 on your lot. 25. So let's let's see. 26 did sell to Mr. Wingo. Let's go over to lot 27. That was the Harriman. 27, the Harriman. Wow. We have 1500 on it. I'll do $1,300. It's a crazy cat character. Uh, uh, the crazy cat character called Mah Mahidabel. Mahidabel, the cat uh, who has questionable morals on a checkered pass. He's just like crazy cat. Pin up. Uh, uh, 
12, uh, what I say? 13, okay, we got a sold on the Nodell for 175. Matter of fact, I'll do 1250 on the Harriman. 1250. So the Nodell is sold. Let me pull that up for that person just so we know where we're at. Here we go. So Nodell sold for 175. Nice pickup, Ronald. 1250. 1250. I'll, I was at 13. I'll go 1250 on the Harriman Mahetable the Cat published pinup. We all know what crazy cats sell for. Again, I know it's not a crazy cat, but 1927, same time frame that crazy cat was out, 1250 for Mahetable the Cat by the great George Harriman. 1250. It's a nice piece. All right, on to lot 28. This was the rusty Lot 28. 1500. Wow. That's Pops Flying wow. Instruction Manual right there. Yeah, that was Junior that scratched into the into the roof. Yeah, if you say so, Pop. I'll do 1350 on this one. What a great recreation. Yeah, I'm gonna get some more too. I was gonna give this 1350. To this is nice size. Hold on, let me get some more. You're going 1350? This is drawn on 14 by 18 inch artboard with an image of 11 and a half by 16.75. Beautiful, Rusty. Then look at that battle scene at the bottom, too, with the crazy guys and battling at the bottom. But wow, 1350 for a beautiful all American Men of War cover recreation, pencil ink, hand colored, and signed by the great Russ Keith. Wow. Nice and episode. the World War One planes and the Zeppelins in the back with the lowering, lowering their their henchmen onto the roofs. Wow! Wow! So you're 1350. 1350. All right. So that was your lot 28 at 1350. Next up is the Wally Wood. Wally Wood Valentines. Wally Wood. I, just to get it get it rolling, I'll do 1300. 1300 Wally Wood 1960s Monsters Valentine's card art. 1300. Very cool pencil inks. Everything is drawn. Even the logo. Everything is drawn at the top. Everything. You've got me wrapped around your finger for the Monsters Valentine. Matter of fact, I'll do 1250. 1250. Not a peep. 1250. That okay. Is crickets. From the Wally Wood Monsters, from Tops too. That's published from Tops from the 60s. Hey, uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, Cumberbatch did want to know, at least at the moment, what your best price was. On, oh, we had five on it? Uh, yeah, you had five on it. I'll do 4,600 and I can do time payments also. 4,600. All right, so you're going for it. That was on lot 48, Cumberbatch. You want me to show them it real quick? Uh, I think Cumberbatch knows which one that is. Okay. So so 4,600, if you say it in the. Comments, you get it first. All right, so on to lot 30. Wow. Marcus Bose, I'll do 1300. Beautiful, 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 large painting in acrylic. It's bringing my dad to tears. Wow. I mean, Betty was around in my time for crying out loud. Look at this beautiful woman. How could you not want that, Junior? How? Uh... You're right, Pops. I, I Junior. I can't say it. Betty Page. Betty I got Page. A, I got a girl, Dad. What? You do? I do. I thought you were still a virgin. <laughs> All right. You just graduated on eighth grade. <laughs> crying out loud. <laughs> well, there you have it. Well, By the great. No, I have wonderful grandchildren, folks. Wonderful grandchildren. I'm proud of them all. All right. So what would your okay. best what's your best price on this? Thirteen hundred dollars. This is by the heavy metal cover painter and Castle of Frankenstein cover painter, Marcus Bose, 14 by 18 inches. This is believed to be from the 1980s. Beautiful painting done in acrylics, $1,300, 14 by 18 inches. This is a gorgeous piece of art. Wow. All right, Pops. I think you get to keep that and hang that on your wall. Wow. Of your bedroom. All right, moving right along. Thir lot 31 was sold, so uh, we're going to go over to lot 32. This was the Green Lantern. Green Lantern That's Splash. I'll do 1350. 40 years old. 40 years old, Junior. 
1981, Green Lantern and Carol Ferris from the, from the story Golden Dawn, Golden Death. Green Lantern 145, 40 years old, Joe Staten, pencils and inks. With Green Lantern using his power ring to fly Carol Ferris next to him as they fly to their mansion. Beautiful page, 1350 today only. Wow. Very nice, sir. Very, very nice. On to lot 33. Lot 33, another cover. We'll do 1,400. Sal Valudo, Justice League Task Force. With, we have the entire team from the story called Clack. We have Martian Manhunter, Gypsy, Elrond, and Triumph, all chasing after Impulse. $1,400. Published cover. Wow. Here comes trouble. That's what they said about you when you were in school. Here comes trouble. I was class clown in school, so I was trouble. No surprise there. Beautiful cover. Great images of all of them. Published cover. You don't find published DC covers. $1,400 bucks by, the, by Sal Valuto. All right. $1,400 on that one. We're over to lot 34. You were at $1,900. Matt Haley, pencil and inks. We'll do $1,700. 1700 on this one, folks. Beautiful. Donna Troy. Look at that sexy Donna Troy with Firestorm. Wow. Flying through outer space. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I don't know if the Betty Page is published or not. I don't know. Let me see if it has any markings on the back. Uh, all it has on the back is just the artist's information. That's all it says on the back. Heroic fantasy illustrations. If it can could be, but I don't know. I'm selling it, but yeah. So beautiful piece. Hey, Let's Nick see. is offering you twelve hundred dollars on the uh, Sal Valuto yeah. Justice League Task Force cover. I had fourteen. Yeah, you went to fourteen. Yeah, N Nick. The lowest I could go is I could go thirteen hundred on it. I'll do thirteen hundred on it. Otherwise, I got to give it a shot for full price on the website. But I'll do thirteen hundred if you want it today. All right, so you were at uh, 1700 Seven, 1700 on this one, yeah. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. Okay, on to Lot 35. Lot 35. Steve, Steve Ditko, pencils and inks. I'll do 1750 Beautiful action. Every panel is action-packed. Every single panel is action -packed. Large art done probably in the 70s, but, I mean, it was published in the 80s. But... But uh, twice up, pencils and ink, Steve Ditko, 1750. It was published in Revolver One, but it was supposed to be in a book called Astral Frontier Number One, was right in the corner, what is what it was originally produced as, and then published later because I think the company went defunct. But pencils and ink, Steve Ditko, uh, 1750. I'll do 1700. I'll do 1700 tonight. All right, and you did have an, uh, an yeah. offer on your lot 34. That was uh, from uh, Paresh there. For yeah, Paresh. You were at 17. Yeah. 17 fires from Paresh. Paresh, as long as I net it, I'll, I'll, I'll go to 16 for today. Otherwise, I'll have to put it on the website. But I'll do 16 today uh, on the on the, on the dueling, on the drop. The Indiana, the Indiana Jones, Jones, Jones and the drop. Raiders of the Lost Art Drop. All right. We do time payments too, Mickey. We do time payments too. Seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred tonight only on the Ditko pencil link. Seventeen hundred. All right. Well, lot thirty-six was claimed by Mr. Alvarez, so we'll go over to lot thirty-seven. Get that up here for you. Twenty-two hundred on it. I will do tonight only. I can't believe it, Indy. Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred pencils and inks. Russ Manning from nineteen hundred. And 64, 1900, Korak is in five of the six panels, and we got Bindi's plane in the other panel with, with Korak and his, and his gorilla friend and his other buddy, Jeremy Carter. This is Silver Age, twice up, 1964, folks. Wow. Holy moly. We don't have any Korak fans out there, man. Wow, but it's Russ Manning, Silver Age. Wow. Sorry, this is going to sell on the site. That's okay. Yeah, so 1900 on that one. 1900. 
All right. So next up is your lot thirty-eight, and this one you've. Uh, yeah, I had lowered it a couple. You lowered times. it to two thousand. Yeah, I'll do nineteen hundred for today only. C three PO and C three PO and R two D two are here. C three PO and R two D two are here. John Ramita twice up from nineteen eighty five. From Droid's first issue, and a couple of pages. Anthony sold a couple. I think without him even on it for over two thousand on a dueling dealer's show. I remember he sold one. But anyway, the droids are on there too, with with uh, the other character, um, uh, Ranger X One is the big robot, and John Ramita signed it at the top in pencil right behind the nineteen. It's signed by Ramita. So from nineteen eighty five, John Ramita Senior, Droid's first issue, twice up, nineteen hundred. All right, 1900. That's your lot 38. Next up is right. your lot 39, and that was uh, the Vampirella piece, and you were at $2,100 on this one. Vampirella. Oh, did I move it around? Uh, you did move it around because you showed it I to remember I, showed uh, it to somebody. I forget now to whom. But, um, oh, here it is. David. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what's that price on it? Uh, 2100 right now. 2100 I'll do two, uh, 2000 on it. Beautiful, beautiful page. From Vampy numbers 25 from 1973. This is just two years into her. Uh, uh, this is one of her earliest stories from the, from the story uh, What Price Love, which was a really cool story. This is right after she just sucked the blood out of a prison guard, and she's running away as the other prison guard is chasing her with a gun. It's drawn large art, 1973, $2,000. By the great Jose Gonzalez, pencils, inks, and wash tones. Two thousand. All right, two thousand dollars on that Vampirella. That was lot thirty-nine. So we'll go over to lot forty now. Lot forty. Wow, Glenn Fabre of thirty. I will do twenty-one hundred. Published cover to a thirty. The magnificent Kevin number five, with a great, great, great image, fully painted in acrylic, of the character, the Midnighter. Wow. Very, very cool from 2005, 2100 bucks. You know what? I'll just do 2000 today only. 2000, published cover. Lot 40. Lot 40. Looks like Batman's uh, ghetto self almost. Trying to be a Batman copycat roughneck. But the great Glenn Fabre full painting, 2000 bucks will do. All right. Very good. Very good. 2000 on that one. So next up is your lot 41. This was that. Lot 41. Huge. That's the Humongo. What yes, it was. You were at uh, $2,500 on this uh, one. It's 24 by 30. I'll do $2,000. This is 24 by 30 by the artist Jack Goggin from 1975 from Cap Kennedy, number 14, titled The Ghosts of Ipidorus. But 24 by 30. It's a book novel painting. 2000 bucks, Folks, this is two feet by two and a half feet of art. All art. Wow. 24 by 30. That belongs in a museum, Pops. This belongs, should be in a museum, Junior. Uh, 2000. As a matter of fact, I'll do 1900. I like to stay at 1900. What the heck? 1900. 1900. All right. I with agree. With a sexy futuristic scene with the vampire crazy people at the top and the guns and 1900. I agree with Michael that the uh, that was a good price on the Fabry as well. So next yeah. up, let's see, the 42 is what? Yeah, uh, 42. You're right. Beautiful piece. I'll do, I love these. I'll do uh, 2250. I love this one. I love skeletons on covers. The skeleton cloaked monk, skeleton monk dragging a casket through the building. 2200, 2200 by the great George Wilson from 1972. Wow. Beautiful. And it's drawn larger, too. Drawn uh, on 15 by 20 inch artboard by the great George Wilson. Ripley's, believe it or not, number 33, early 1972. Wow. All right. 2250? 22 will go. 2022. 20, All right. And you're right. Uh, can't shake a stick at I, much of this. And, and I love that candlestick holder, too, with the skull. 2200 All right. And uh, let's see. We got a offer from Kevin Clement on your lot 42. Which you, is what? That was the Ripley's. Uh, uh, sorry. Yep. On lot 42. Let me get the. Where are we? It's on the screen. Oh, there we are. Yep. 
Okay. I forgot I had it left it up there. You know what, Kevin? I'll do the two thousand for you. You've been you you've been a, a good patron of this show and stuff of the sh of dueling shows. I'll do two thousand for you, sure. This is Kevin's for two thousand. Yeah, no, that's a great piece, Kevin. That's, that's a beauty. I also have a little placard, like a little card with the comic book on it that goes with it, that came with it. So it's yours for the two thousand. Very nice, very nice pickup. So we got lot forty three is your next one here. Well, that's a big steal. Get up there, for yes. of course. Yes. Uh, twenty five. Uh, I'll do twenty two fifty. Bernie Krigstein, Pencil Inks. Oh, I was it. We'll do twenty two. We'll do twenty two. Twenty two hundred. Twice up. Nineteen fifty four. Beautiful piece. Twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred. That is a fantastic piece. Bernie Krigstein, EC, flying action. You're welcome, Kevin. Twenty two hundred. Matter of fact, I'll do ah. 2100, 2100 before the end of the show. 2100 for the Bernie Krigstein. 2100 on your. It's a really line. great page. Yeah, I get it. On lot uh, 43. And uh, hey, Romaine, I saw that you just tried to claim the uh, Wilson 42. You might need to hit the live button because you might be a few seconds behind the rest of the show. That that, that did get claimed about a minute before you, you uh, posted that. Uh, all right. So let's see. Your lot 44, the ROM page was sold to Scott Wingo. So we'll, we'll get the lot 45 artwork here for you. Uh, Jack Kirby, you know what? Uh, I'll do three. Uh, I'll do 3,100. I'll knock off 400. Really cool from the, it came out the same month as Fantastic Four number four. It's Reed Richards clone. Artist. How funny. He's an artist. Everything he draws with the magical UFO pen, everything he draws comes to life. So you got the UFO there at the bottom too that gave him the pen. And long live the king. That's an that's an an homage to Jack Kirby. Long live the king. Come on. You Jack Kirby fans out there. That's awesome. Uh 3100 bucks. All right, 3100 on lot 45. All right, that's a that's a fair price there, sir. Yep. All right, let's get lot 46 up here on the screen. This was the oh, Williamson. the Al Williamson. I'll do 3250. Al Williamson pencils, Torres, Angelo Torres, and Roy Crankle inks. Uh, done in 1958 for Alarming Tales number four, uh, which became defunct after issue three. Then it got published in 65 and blast off number one. But it is Comics Code Authority stamp 1958 on the back. And there's a bunch of penciled L. Williamson drawings on the back. They're light, but they're really cool pencil drawings on the back as well. But uh, uh, 3200 bucks. Okay. 1958 L. Williamson. Just after he left EC. Just after he left EC. Very cool stuff. Really cool science fiction story, too. Very, very cool. Hard to find Al Williamson twice up stuff, folks. All right. So 3200 on the uh, Al Williamson. Now we're going to go to lot 47, and that was uh, the Ditko. Steve Ditko, Ink by Wally Wood. I'll do 3500 oh, I was going to say 3750 3500 before the end of the show. Steve Ditko, Ink by Wally Wood. They only did three stories together ever. Great page. Dynamo throughout. Rocky. Every panel is a great page from this. Twice up, 1960, SF 67 on there. It's actually from 1966. I didn't look at the date stamp. It's stamped 66 on the back. But Dynamo and Wally, Steve Ditko and Wally Wood, Dynamo and Rocky, beautiful action page throughout. Twice up, 55 years old, folks. 55 years old. 3,500 bucks. 3,500 bucks today, Owen. Good price, sir. All right, we've only got uh, a few more here to go. Yeah, lot, finally, lot forty-eight. Now, this one you were at yeah. uh, forty-six. 46. Yeah, yeah. So you remember. Before the end of the show, I'll do forty-five hundred. This is a great battle page. Iron Man in every single panel, battling Atuma. Uh, just a great page, and look at that top spread. Wow, forty-five hundred. Don Heck, nineteen sixty-four. Don Heck, inked by Mike Esposito. 
just 25 issues into his series. 4,500 bucks. Great, great page. Wow. It is a beauty. Hey, no worries, Remain. By Iron yeah. Man's co-creator, Don Heck. I mean, what more could be what could be better than that? Twice up, two years into Iron Man's run. From his original title. All right, so you're 4,500. 4, yep. All right, on lot 48. Let's get uh, lot 49 back up on the screen. Here we go. Uh, I, this is going to sound nuts. Bill, help me here. Bill again. Ben again. Ben I'm gonna, Bindiana, I'm going to do something crazy right now. I'm going to say 8,500 on this. Neil Adams, inked by Bernie Wrightson, the only issue they ever worked on. I don't know if you know this or not, but this book was split up a couple of years back. Some of the, a couple of the pages went for over 20 grand. Some of the panel pages went for 20 grand at auction. Uh, 8,500 bucks. Nice images of Green Lantern captured by the Black Hand. 1971, 50 years old. Bernie, uh, Neil Adams inked by Bernie Wrightson. Wow. 8,500 for our faithful audience with us still. 8,500. That is a good price. Wow. Wow. All right. Lot 50. Bindiana. Are you kidding me? Bindiana. I would not kid you, sir. Strange uh, Adventures, Murphy Anderson. I'm gonna do something really crazy. I'm sitting because down. it's last I'm gonna I'm gonna knock off twenty five hundred bucks just for tonight only. You have to do it by the end of the show. Time payments are possible too. I'll do ten thousand. Time payments are possible. Murphy Anderson pencil and inks. I'll do ten grand. Uh, and time payments are possible. I also take Venmo and Zell now, folks. I take Venmo and, Z and Zell now. 10,000. Strange Adventures. Because it's piece 50 of our 50 piece, other than our extra five, five bonus pieces at the end. 10 grand. Large Art, Murphy Anderson, DC, Pencil and Inks. The 12 o'clock man. Wow. Whoa. All right. That, that's a beauty, Pops. The 12, what was it called? Oh, Mystery of the 12 O'Clock Man, the cover. Large art, 1964, 57 years old. 10 grand. All right, we got three more pieces to go because lots 51 and 55. Right. I believe, yeah, both of those had sold. So we're going to go to lot 52. Uh, I have 1,300 on it. I'll do 1,100 bucks. Published, I don't know what issue it is. It's a Savage Sword, I believe. Or, or, or one of the books. But anyway, it's published in 1981. It's page 39. That makes me believe it's a Savage Sword. But I'll do $1,100 on it. Tony DeZuniga, Pencil and Inks, 40 years old, $1,100. Can you show lot 49 again? Is, oh, that's the... Uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the uh, Wrights and Adams piece. Yep. And Adams, yeah. Check that out. Neil Adams, inked by... Neil Adams inked by Bernie Wrightson. And time payments are possible too. I agreed to go down to $8,500 on it with the black hand in every panel and then great shots of Green Lantern at the top as he is held hostage by the black hand. $8,500. You're pretty sinister with that voice. Whoa. Yes, Junior. That's two hours of talking, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Chris is offering you yeah. seventy five hundred on it. Yeah, Chris, I could do eighty five and give you six months to pay. How's that for you? So you're firm on uh, the eighty five. Yeah, because I, I better put on the site for ten and see what I could get. But eighty five, I could do an old for you. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got. So I'll say uh, eleven hundred. Matter of fact, I'll do a thousand bucks today only. I'll do a thousand bucks on the Conan Splash. Right, that was your lot 50. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong 50, 52. Yep. Yeah. I'll do a thousand bucks. It's page 39 to a published 1981 Marvel book. Thousand bucks. All right. Two more to go. Lot 53. Uh, let's get down there. Here we go. Lot 53. Oh, the boss. Zoom. You know what? I'll do a thousand bucks on this also. What that? Full splash 1989. $1,000. Look at that. Holy Toledo from cloak and dagger to a thousand bucks. 
Uh, we got a claim on the uh, Conan. Yep, that 1,000. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Brian, this is yours. Thanks. Thousand bucks. I'm knocking off five hundred dollars. One third. Thousand bucks. Full Thor splash. I said uh, Bill of Thor might want this to put it in the back of his uh, office for for shows when he wears his Thor helmet. Doesn't get much bigger for a Thor splash, there, folks. Wow. And published, even though it was in cloak and dagger. I know. Ugh. Thousand bucks. Thousand dollars on that one. We've got one more artwork to go, and then Pops can uh, have a have a have, yeah. a, have a nightcap oh, okay. and uh, take some. Uh, I don't know what you need to take. Get yeah. rid of that cough. If you're Beautiful. Well, it's not a cough. Just a just a it's scratch. A just a dry throat. dry throat. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll do eleven hundred bucks. Huge. Uh, Jack Davis painting of Civil War General Wheeler. This is large, folks. This is nine by twenty-two inch. Matter of fact, I'll do a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. It's nine by twenty-two. Drawn on nine by twenty-two inch board. A uh, beautiful piece by the great Jack Davis from the eighties, and a full painting. Beautiful. Thousand bucks. All right. Well, let me know if uh, any any last. Uh, we have a couple minute or two. Couple last. Uh, Anybody want anything uh, before we go off the air or have any questions? Just ask away. Right. Well, we did sell 25. Uh, oh, we sold 25? Yes, That's we, awesome. Yes, we did, Pops. Uh, junior, I'm proud of you. Junior, Junior. Uh, uh, I'm proud of you too, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, everybody, if you've claimed any artwork, don't forget Mr. Berkey's email address right there on the screen. Let them know which artworks you claimed and your mailing address so we can get an email invoice out to you ASAP. So uh, don't wait till tomorrow. There's still plenty of daylight. Well, at least as long as you're in the continental U U.S. If you're in Europe, I guess you could wait until in the morning. And I have something else to say, too. Oh, and you've got something else to say. We what have, would that be? We have a Dueling Dealers show on Wednesday. Okay. And I'd like to list my artists. Our, we have a Dueling Dealers show Wednesday at 9. My art. We have a Don Perlin 1974 birth page. A Randy Green phenomenal published Marvel Splash. A Salvador La Roca published Marvel cover. A Frank Bruner awesome pinup. A Gary Frank published X-Men pinup. A Mike McCone published Marvel cover. Carlos Pacheco fantastic DC hero cover. A George Perez DC semi splash hero splash. A beautiful Art Adams detailed DC pinup. A Frank Miller pencil and ink superhero pinup. A Dan Jurgens phenomenal Marvel superhero splash page. A Dave Lamb from 1990s cover. An Alex Malieve phenomenal Marvel painting. A John Romita Sr. Marvel pinup. A Gene Colan Bronze Age Batman splash page. And a Michael Golden Bronze Age cover. Wow. We didn't have to break out the whip tonight, Dad. Good job. So that that's that's uh, all for Wednesday's show, folks, of Dueling Dealers. Every Wednesday at 9 p.m. That's true. Anthony will be back in action if he survived New York Comic Con. We assume he has. He's been sending us photographs every now and again oh. of... Uh, what? I think artist sightings more than oh, anything. Yeah. yeah, I get some John Romita Jr. photo he sent me today. But thanks to everybody. Thanks, everybody. It was a lot of fun. Hope everybody had a good time. Oh, yeah. I and again, please, when you send me the emails, please have your address in them. Please just have your address in them and what you bought and the price. And again, I could start taking Zelle and Venmo. I like the personal checks, but Zelle and Venmo are fine now, too, now, if that makes things easier for people also. PayPal is fine as long as you're willing to pay the PayPal fees. So, and credit card. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. This was a lot of fun for us as well. I can assure you we'll definitely do another Bin Dive show in the future. We don't really have a set schedule to do, the, do these shows on Saturdays, but uh, uh, the next time we have one scheduled, we'll definitely let you know at least two to three weeks in advance so you can plan ahead. Yeah, yes. keep that hat on, Pops. I know. Oh, Look at my man. hair. Oh, my gosh. Man. I'm glad you didn't. Uh, you kept your clothes on tonight because we were a little yeah. scared there earlier. Yeah, I said. Yeah, I, I saw. It. I didn't have any dollar bills to give you. So, anyways, thank you again, everybody. We will definitely do one of these again. And it, like 
Pop said Wednesday night at nine o'clock will be the next Dueling Dealers episode. I believe that's actually episode 40. So we'll be the big 4 0. That's right. Big 4 0. Wow. Mackerel. Time is flying. Holy Toledo. Holy Toledo. And you can tell we got a, something special, hopefully, for our Halloween episode, maybe? Yes. And uh, I forget which episode, if it's going to be the week, the Wednesday yeah. before or the I'm Wednesday gonna, after Wednesday. Halloween, only because it's a big themed episode. I have not given them any information on right. what the uh, show is going to be about, but it's definitely going to be themed. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've already completely storyboarded everything, and Anthony's got a fair amount to shoot. He will be in costume for the entire shoot. It should be a lot of fun. Yes, we're all in costume. And Mike gets to play two different characters in this one. He's got a very important role. Well, I'm sorry, not Pops, Pops. All right, so we're thank you, Junior. We're calling it a, a night. So again, thank you so much, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks.